Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah, that's a bit much, huh? We'll do something fun, though. How about this? Yeah. No? Yeah, I like this one. Okay. Woo! All right. So, what's up, folks? I just, like, popped on in here, and I was like, yeah! Uh, that was less me celebrating the fact that we're... Oh, give me a second. I'm sorry. I just, like, sprinted up <laughs> our whole house. Um... Welcome everybody, how you doing? If you haven't been here before, my name is Space Tomato. Not a tomato, but uh, I do like space. I like to talk about space too. That's what we're doing today. It's Monday. Whew. God, <laughs> we got that energy today. We are gonna be talking about Star Citizen in a whole bunch of different lights and contexts today. I am answering questions. Uh, we're just gonna kinda go into it, really. I don't have any specific topic. There's a lot of stuff going on in Star Citizen lately. A uh, lot to talk about, a lot to go over, and I figured, why don't we just have a little congregation? Congregate with me, my friends. Let me show you the great word of our Lord Pico, and uh, maybe we'll be a little bit more enlightened by the end of today. No, I really just want to bring in the knowledge that everybody has, the resources you guys want to look into. Maybe you got an old video, a topic, something you want to go over. Throw it in the chat, exclamation, uh, <sighs> capital question. Capital letters question in brackets. And then ask a question. I'm gonna drink some water. Mm. Oh, that's good. Wow. I saw on, on Twitter the other day. Yeah, that happened still. Um, actually, Mrs. Tomato saw on Twitter the other day. Somebody was like, somebody posted a picture of like some kind of alcohol. I don't remember what it was. Whiskey, maybe. And they were like, name another 10 out of 10 drink, no matter what time or no, like no matter what the situation is and everybody's like uh water is water is like the 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 nectar of life right we can all agree that water is pretty solid pretty pretty much a positive i i know some people actually don't like drinking water which is okay like you pick what you want to drink i just feel like that would really come to mind as a <laughs> as an obvious choice of drink for any well-respected human being with skin. Whiskey on whiskey. Question, ask your question in this format. That's not a question, Mrs. Tomato. Come on, lead by example. All right, so I am especially happy today. Uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, we are really looking forward to Whew. Sorry, excuse me. Just taking a little break here. Let me see who's here. Who are my folks today? Firebrand, I see you. Good to see you, my friend. Shifty, welcome in, buddy. Two names that yeah can't go can't go a stream without seeing. At least I hope so. Feels wrong if you do. Good to see you both in here. Colt, the Colt's favorite. Is this Albion? No. It's not, but I'm, I'm, where is Fable? Hold on. What's the name of the, uh, Playground Games Fable? Where the heck is this game? What's the latest news here? Four weeks ago, everything we know so far about Fable. What does that mean? It's just a teaser trailer. Uh, it's made by, uh, Playground Games. <laughs> or is it, it's turn 10, huh? Wait, turn 10. What is it? Turn 10 and Playground, two different companies? So I'm, I'm seeing here that there's really nothing new on this game. Albion? It's definitely not Albion. I'm sorry. Astro Trucker, Hong Kong, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Orlando Fendi, <laughs> welcome. What's up? Space Funk, dance, y'all. We need to get a dancing emoji, huh? Or is it an emote? I don't remember which one is correct on Twitch anymore. We need to get a dancing emote, like a dancing tomato. Shaking that tomato ass. Arcane, good to see you with the lights. Linux, welcome. AAK, good to see you, dude. Long time. <laughs> hey, y'all. What's up, Stuart? Brandon, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member on YouTube. Much appreciated. Uh, we should have a new video out for you this week at some point. 
Abdi, welcome. Dude, this this hinge is like a little loose. I'm not I'm not about that. This shouldn't be able to move this much. It's like not as easy to set the mic where I want it. Um Abdi, that was not that was not justice. Close though, it sounds good, huh? What's up, Marcus? Welcome. Echo. There's a toes gang cotton candy milk boy. Good to see you, dude. Baltson, welcome. Now that the dancing is done, morning to all in the garden. Yeah, wait. Wait for the dancing to end before you can say good morning. There ain't no mornings while you're jigging. The judge. Zip flame. Zero. Galather. Galather! Yo! Good to see you. We got a shout out for Galather in chat, right? I see info runners in chat too. It's uh, we got it rolling out the red carpet here. How you doing, dude? Eggs? That be you? What is the price for automatic loading of cargo? We don't know. I would assume it'd be some percentage of what you're loading. Cause you know, <laughs> that would suck if not. Meridian Yerg. Oh seven, buddy. Can't say you're excited and leave us hanging. No, 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 it's not kids. It's mu something much simpler than that. It's a simple utility. <laughs> Tell them a little without giving names. They're going to... Oh, oh, about that. No, 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 I'm waiting on that. There's multiple things that they're, it's, it's, you know, you can feel good about. Um, we, made, we made some good progress on our home recovery today. Our, our <laughs> fingers crossed, biting my tongue, uh, but our boiler is working. So we are, we're back in the hot zone. If you get what I'm saying. Sayaka, welcome. Is it me or is tomato a bit soft? My volume is up to max. Yeah, I was a bit soft. Sorry about that. Turn myself up. What's up, Millotype? How you doing? Um, yeah, I had I don't know why it was so low. I just moved my Go XLR around, so. Might have tripped up that volume a bit. Galather. Knocks on wood to chase off any evil spirits. Knock on wood, man. Sacrifice a squirrel. All that jazz. Hot tub stream. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. Just because we have hot water doesn't mean we suddenly got a hot tub. <laughs> we, have, we have a bathtub, okay? And I don't even trust that thing. Where am I stationed at? I'm, I'm not in the military. I am a... I am a civvy. Lovely little civvy man talking about video games and trying to get hot water. <laughs> All of it, glad to hear stuff is getting settled there for sure. It is nice, man. I mean, we have a whole saga about this. But uh, I won't get into it here. We're here for Star Citizen, mate. Just, I'm just happy we're back to like our house is heated. We've been living on space heaters for the last I don't know how long and not having hot water is bad for like showers and stuff so it is a it's a blessing that it's back and it should hold us over until we're moving should again knock on all the woods around you guys station on a uee idris i am stationed out in the middle of magnus and i'm waiting for star citizen to open up and give give more players why don't we start off this conversation with a classic yeah let's because I'm not seeing any questions yet. I got to spur some conversation here. New to the stream. Enjoy the last one. Thank you for coming to both, Urgent. I hope you enjoy this one. This is more of a... The last two were both pretty gameplay oriented. I generally do more talking stuff on Mondays. Question and answer stuff. Deep dives into certain topics. Stuff like that. Um, and then on Friday and Saturday, we do more gameplay stuff. Wednesday is kind of a wild card. But I tend to bring on a guest stream for that. Cold water showers are great for waking up, though. <laughs> Not if it's also cold outside the shower. Super excited now that server meshing works well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Signusian, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Mellow type. Oh, I already saw your name. But you get two hellos today. All right, let's start by talking about everybody's favorite controversial topic. <laughs> Star Citizen 1.0. No, we're not going to talk about that. That is that has gotten. I've I did not expect so many people to be so. Um, dis, disapproving of the of of them talking about a Star Citizen 
I don't know. People are very peeved about it in some some places I've seen. Let me drag this back in here. Cool. You want to talk about mining? You asked a question, Astro Trucker. Can you can you ask it again? I'm sorry, I might have missed it. Ah, how will the whole sea be loaded with the new cargo hangers? Okay. There you go. That's 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 an easy one. The whole sea is going to be loaded at docks. So, best way to see that. Like, yeah, they take some justice, some liberties on their trailers. Um, but this is kind of a real representation of how the whole sea works. You basically just pull it up to the side of the space station, and then you need other spaceships and stuff to transport boxes over to the hull sea. So that's why you have these over here. You probably see these in game a little bit. You saw it on that teaser last year at Citizen Con. It's one of the ships that's getting an update this year. This was the main purpose of this thing. It was both to pick up escape pods, like from Idris's and stuff, and also to carry large boxes to ships that needed to be loaded like this. So this is generally how these ships are gonna get loaded in the game. Should be an interesting logistics challenge. I look forward to it. Now I'm gonna turn this trailer off because that music gets me a copyright warning. Um, Saw another question here asking for a friend. Do you think the retaliator will be released for Invictus with new modules? I think there's a good chance of that. The retaliator is supposed to come in this year. It's on its gold pass. It's doing all its things. It's looking real good. It's feeling nice and fleek. I think, yeah, I think it's coming. I don't know about Invictus, but that does seem like a really good time for a military ship to get an update, right? October 2024 for a Fable release. That would be cool. All right, sorry I missed those first two questions. I'm gonna be better about that now. Question, <laughs> what's this about new channel? Space Tomato Plays gives us, give us the deets. There is a new channel. Uh, the deets will be given. This is our latest channel. We have a couple coming this year. Um, oh, I'm not subscribed, there we go. This is uh, Space Tomato Plays. I'll link it to you guys if you want. It's gonna be where we're putting our gameplay from now on and We've already put a couple videos up. Generally, they will be summaries of the gameplay that we do on Wednesdays with guests and sometimes our org gameplay you can see on there. But also the biggest reason I wanted to open this channel is because I've... Anybody who's been around this stream for a long time knows that even though I do a lot of the talking about games, I actually want to play <laughs> at some point. Um, and my one of my go-to channels for gameplay in any game out there on YouTube is JLK. And I've always wanted to take this guy's style of videos and storytelling and the way he does his stuff and bring it to Star Citizen. And I know some people are already doing uh, gameplay like this style, but it's something I've wanted to do since 2020 and I never had a PC that could run the game well. Um, and now that I do, we decided to make a gameplay channel so we could start to work towards that. So if you want to uh, be up to date on that stuff, that's there. Thanks for asking, Echo. What system and lore is my favorite? Ellis, the Ellis system. Uh, it is one of the biggest in the game. Oh man, I'm gonna fall behind very quickly like this. It is one of the biggest uh, systems in the game. I think it's got 11 planets and it's like 120 AU across. It's crazy big. Love JLK, Ellis content got you into DayZ, which, is, which in turn got you into Star Citizen through Anarchy. Anarchy's good too. There are, there are a bunch of creators that make good, good videos like that. I don't have the creativity yet to make good gameplay videos. I get into a game and I'm like, what do I do? I'm super used to playing FPSs and RPGs where you just get objectives and go follow them. So I'm learning more about like sandbox gameplay and how to tell a story. And that's, that's going to be part of my journey on that, on that, uh, on that channel. So this is the Ellis system and like, you know, Stanton is probably about this big, right? You got four good planets here inside the green band. But Ellis, you can just kind of keep backing up, and 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 backing up. And it's like, oh, okay. This is like, see, this is the Oort cloud, right? And there's a freaking planet outside of it. How's that even possible? So... This system's going to be a lot of fun to explore. And I think this is one of those systems that's really good at showing when people are like, oh, there's, they're going to add systems. Everyone's going to know everything that's in each system and there's not going to be any room for exploration. 
I'm pretty sure if the Ellis system had been in game since 2017, we couldn't have explored all of it by now. I think there's a lot of room in these systems to hide stuff. There's huge asteroid belts, right? There's like tons of planets that are dead. There's anomalies out in space. There are comets and stuff. So I think it's this kind of stuff that helps you realize how much scale there is to Star Citizen. And this system isn't that far out. Like if you look at where we are, the Stanton system is here. This is us. The Pyro system's right here, right? So there's our other jump. Um, but the other direction from Pyro is Magnus, which is a, a GII's home system. That's where we live. GII. Join GII. Hashtag. Um, and right next to it is Ellis. And if you follow the line from Stanton to Seoul, where we are now. Where are we? Mm, here. So Stanton, Magnus, Ellis, Killian, Davian, Farron. Um... I'm lost. Nope, sorry. You get to Davian and you get to Seoul. So, like, you know they're going to add Earth at some point. So this is a, a line of systems that has to come into the game. Ellis is right there. Huge system. I'm looking forward to it. It's beautiful. It's where the big races are. It's where the tourism's happening. It's all, it's all good. They got a planet called Green. Like, come on. So, yeah. That's my favorite system. And that's my diatribe about it. Uh, let's see, zoom in forward. Are you and Mrs. Tomato coming to CitizenCon this year? We would love to, but uh, the cards, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. It's a lot. Um, and we've got a lot going on this year, obviously with the stuff going on with the house right now, this place, and uh, the place we're going to be moving into after this, we just, it's, we want to make sure to focus on, you know, Keeping our clear path. We'll see, but it's a soft no. Do we know if the Zeus MK2 will be released this summer? We don't. We don't. I don't know when it will be released. Um, some people think it'll be this summer, summer, but I think they're still going to aim for Citizen Con. Cozy Boy does some neat narrative gameplay in SE. Does. Yes. I like his style. That's good stuff. It's hard to do that too. It's hard to get all the shots you need for that and to plan out the gameplay and to do the narration. I have a lot of respect for people who do that. How will they populate systems this big when we don't even have two of them and they are kind of empty? We only They're only kind of empty because they don't have the systems to support AI or to support more players. Look at how much the player count's gone up after the first test of, star of server meshing. We went from 100 players to 800 in weeks. So... You know, as they are able to further expand server meshing and especially bring on uh, dynamic server meshing. Hey, thanks for the sub, Abdi. My dude, Abdi was on, was it the first episode of this year or the last one of last year? Appreciate you, dude. Y'all give Abdi a looky look if you haven't already. He's also a streamer of Star Citizen and does some of the art stuff as well. And I love to see it, man. 30 months might be the longest you've ever been subscribed to any streamer. I'm honored, man. Thank you. Abdi's a good guy. Go check him out. Yes, thank you for the shout out. Appreciate you, Echo. But yeah, they have, there's a lot of the stuff that they need to scale this game is just now starting to pop up, right? Creatures, fauna, the fact that we don't have a set amount of location archetypes, like we're just now seeing, you can just go back to um, the Citizen Con stuff. <laughs> Stars Citizen. <laughs> You can go back to the Citizen Con stuff and look at stuff like here. Mm, 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 mm. Here. Look at stuff like this. And listen to what they're saying here. So, we like to think we've done a pretty good job with that. But that's me. Um, using this expanded library, we've been able to increase the individual location size because there's less of that obvious repetition between buildings within any single location. And we can't really call some of these large locations outposts anymore. They become something more like settlements and important to the point where we could make smaller locations like this one, but with a limited amount of variety between each one. And this is what that library of modules looked like at that point. Um, we'd established our main building modules as well as some of our larger buildings and a number of smaller secondary and dressing and standalone modules. But each outpost couldn't be too large without there being some obvious repetition between the modules used. 
So let's have a look at that library today. All right. Now keep that in mind. This is this is what I this is the colonialism archetype. If you go back into the Star Citizen Wayback Machine, oh my God! You know what I just realized? I haven't been recording this. Now we are. That's going to be interesting to figure out. Um, if you go back in the Star Citizen Wayback Machine, so if if we can't figure out the editing, sorry to everybody who just jumped into this video. We're, <laughs> we're just going to get right into it. Um, you'll find their archetype library and you know everything that cig puts out is subject to change but this i think i think they're sticking to this right we've got high tech we go over this a lot here <laughs> we got high tech and we got utilitarian in game already what we're seeing now is the introduction of colonialism here with the frontier style and derelict style outposts and um sort of sub locations they still got streamline, metaclassicism, henoism, supermodernism, and they've got to build out high tech quite a bit still. On top of that, you know, they're using this as a subset. So they've got outposts that they're building in libraries. And then they've also obviously are doing all these. So you've also got your space stations then. So you got outposts as an archetype, space stations as an archetype. Um, on top of that, you can go over to that other thingy, Majiga. Here we go. You've got distribution centers, which are going to be placed all throughout the system or multiple systems. And then you've got the big one, base building. Which are showing off the and this is kind of their way of being like, yo, so this game's big and there's gotta be a lot of different types of locations. So here's what we're doing there. And then on the other side of things, they're talking about server meshing that can support more AI. They're talking about fauna that can be more fun to hunt. They're putting together their subsumption system to build out more missions and building them in modules so that they can procedurally place those missions in different places without having to custom make them all. It's not revolutionary stuff. It's standard stuff, I think. I'm not a game dev or a doctor, but I think that's how it works. And um, from what I understand, they've just been trying to get the tools together to make sure they can do this at a higher pace once the engine's done. I think was kind of what they were trying to announce at CitizenCon. What's the deal with Stanton to Terra Jump Point currently in game? Why Terra? Oh, they're just next to each other. Um, Stanton goes to Terra right here. In fact, Stanton, Terra, and Magnus have this nice little triangle here. And then if you add an Ellis, you're basically like Magnus is, I, I hate to out our org. Like, I don't want people fighting us for this space. It's a big system, though. We can share. Magnus is in such a great spot. You're connected to Stanton, Terra, and Ellis. It's like, I, I don't think, I don't think there's a better three-way connection in the entire human system. Those are, these are like the three powerhouses of commerce and tourism. It's, it's kind of crazy. How many years until next system after Pyro is out, do I guess? I would say one. I think, I think they'll bring Nyx back pretty quickly. Now that we've seen how quickly they can... Um, I think the only thing that would hold Nyx back is the factions. And I just don't... I don't think that's going to take them longer than two years. And I see Pyro coming out by the end of this year. I think we'll see Nyx by the end of next year. Um, or at least in testing by the end of next year. All right. Keep in mind, folks, I am looking for the... Uh, uppercase question in brackets that that does help me find them yeah d light so the content for those locations is the other side of the the, the stuff that's kind of that's what you're seeing with uh um, ba, ba, ba. here we go this part is it this part no it's not this part it's uh Here we go. This stuff. So this is where they're kind of talking about the gangs, the factions, the people that you're working with, the missions that you're running for them. They're talking about the armor progression, the loot you can get, how you can get it, all that kind of stuff. That's more... That's the other side of the, the discussion, right? And that's what we've been seeing with things like engineering, adding locations with gameplay. Engineering can mean you interact with those locations and make them work or 
fix them or something like that. Adding loot, adding cargo. It's like the core gameplay, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to pull it from the VOD. Uh, Baltson, thank you for the member on YouTube. An onion, my friend, yeah? Look at you. We'll have to um, make sure you get added to our referral program for that. Uh, that sounds terrible. It's not a referral program. Oh, my God. Uh, wipe that from your memory. That sounded bad. It's not. It's literally just referral referral code randomizer. But we will add you to that. Um, appreciate you. It's like... Basically, if you click on my referral code link in any of my video's descriptions, it just adds one of our random supporters referral codes. It's a way to distribute the wealth. Isn't 323 overdue now? No patch for quite some time, no? Uh, no, we had 322 in December, so 323 would be due for April. It's usually how it goes. Have you heard about the roadmap leak? I have not. I'm sure I will soon, though. Can a system be controlled by an org? Not a whole star system, I don't think, no. There's going to be too many AI pushing back against you. Um, maybe if the system is barren, though, yeah. Uh, usually, yeah, they're usually coming April 22nd. December, April. December, April. December, April. December. This should be April. We'll see if it happens. Question. Do you think they're still planning on upping the size of planets? No. I think the planets are pretty much good to go because the scale would be all thrown out of whack if they decided to update them. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we are talking about 1 to 8th scale. No, 1 to 6th scale distances and moons. And one to eighth scale planets? Is that it? Something like that? I don't want to really discuss leaks on here. I try not to get into leaks that are data mined here for the sakes of people who don't really want to hear it. But I do see you in chat. Interesting. Shouldn't be four patches per year, so one every three months. It's about that, yeah. I mean, it's like... It's like kind of four patches per year. Like if you look at this schedule, you'll get one in April, March. Uh, this is this is a weird year. You can't count that. You'll get one in, let's see, April, August, October, December. So like, yeah, four patches in a year. Um, one every three or so months, but they're, they're not on an exact schedule. I also think that the patch, sometimes the patches just get thrown out of whack because of whatever is happening that year. So like this year was April... Um, yeah, this year in 2022, it looks like we had one update the entire year. It was two, two, three. Because they split this one into a few. That was a slow year, though. Arguably, it was a slow year. There was a lot of, there was some good additions in that, like, selling items to shops was pretty solid. Man, that was, that was... What else did we get this year? I know we... Oh, the server sizes went up. AI planetary navigation. Right. So we got more missions outside with these new locations. Yeah, it seemed a lot better because the new locations came in with new missions. But this patch really took like three quarters. So that's a weird year. And sometimes it does happen like that. But generally, March, May, September, December. Um, we'll probably do an April. I think we'll get three patches this year, likely. One year for the next system after Pyro. Wouldn't they're working on like three systems at the same time once Pyro is close to being finished? They are, but I'm trying not to overdo people's expectations. I would rather say one system in the next year and then update that a little bit as we go forward and hear more from them than say five systems in the next year and then be like, oh, sorry guys. I've done that before. It's not fun. <laughs> I'm still currently doing that. Have they mentioned how randoms will be prevented from entering your personal hangar? When they're in the same elevator as you, don't let them get in your elevator, I think. I, I would assume you might also get authority to use force in your hangar. Could be the case. One sixth all? No, I think I thought it was different. Preach. 
Do we know which systems will be used for Squadron 42? As in, will there be systems built for Squadron that will come? Yes. That's those are the other systems that might show up. So Squadron 42. Let's uh let's do this again. Squadron 42 takes place in the uh, Vega and Odin systems. Where are we? Okay, so yeah, here we are. So looking at the game right now, we are in. Here we are. The Stanton system. Now, if you follow the Stanton system. You can go down to Pyro, and Pyro has a bunch of jump gates. Look at that. Just like a spider of stupid Xeno threat. Um, pyro goes to Nyx, right? So the next system that we would get after Pyro, we think because we've already had the main landing area in Nyx. It's called Levski. You can look it up. There are video. I have videos on it. Um, it was the first landable location in the game, and they added it to Stanton because the planets weren't ready. Nyx has what is called an asteroid, looks like a small planet or moon. And they had it in Stanton for a while, and then they removed it once Microtech came in. So the only big landable area in Nyx is kind of got a lot of work done on it. Besides that, not much else work to do. So they could ship Nyx pretty quickly. They've also shown us actually some of their planetary development on Nyx. I'll show you that real quick. That was a while ago, but it was mostly hype map stuff. So we had some flora here. Um, it's conceptual stuff. They might have just put this on Microtech or something, to be honest. We got some height maps here. Some of the different kinds of designs they were looking at for Nyx's more terrestrial or not terrestrial, but like barren bodies. And then we've got some more texture work that's kind of adding some detail to those height maps. Man, I there we go. And like, it definitely looked more alien than what we have in Stanton, which I think was what they were going for. Um, but this was a while back. This is 2021. We haven't heard anything since. But yeah, so that's Nyx. That's done. And then from there, we can move to Odin, which is in Squadron 42. So you can kind of imagine that their goal is by the time Squadron 42 maybe is close to coming out, they can do Stanton to Pyro to Nyx to Odin, have four systems done. And then you have Vega, which is also in, in uh, Squadron 42, but that's not connected, so I don't know what they're going to do about that. They might just throw in a connection. Who knows? Um, my guess for the following system from there would be Castra, because it's a pretty heavy... Um, it is a pretty heavy human military presence, and since they will have a commerce system of Stanton, they will have a... This is a, a commerce kind of medium security system, a outlaw low security system, a sort of neutral system. This would be the heavy military super safe zone system that they could put in. They could also go with Terra, but like that's a big system. So I don't know. One tenth for the planets and one sixth for moons and other distances. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely two different scales, but I forget what it was. There's a Death Star in Nyx. <laughs> I wonder if I have any footage from there. Just a little bit. Uh, this is just something from an old around the verse. Ah, <laughs> Old school Star Citizen, although this is post 3.0, right? Since there is Delamar. These go a long way toward personalizing each player's experience, as the AI will communicate with players differently depending on their relationship and history. Ah, geez. That takes me back. You think it should be Terra? I also think it should be Terra. You know, my theory, okay, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer of Castra, but my wild. My, I guess my more tin hat theory is that it is Terra. This makes for the perfect starting star system for Star Citizen, right? It's basically the capital. Sorry for all of you who like Soul. Ooh, Earth. It's basically the capital of the game. It has several plant planets with breathable atmosphere, a ton of security, right? You're going to have tons of protection for new players here. Um, outlaws will probably want to get out of here pretty quickly and just go to Stanton or Pyro. 
and you've got a ton of like little things you got asteroid clusters an asteroid belt multiple moons planets all this stuff like this is such a good system for them to start out with but it's a it is a hefty hefty dose of system the only thing we've ever heard about terra was in the 2015 original they call them the uh, I think they call them the the Disco Lando leaks, and I don't think he likes that. Um, there was a little bit of a an oopsie back in like 2015, 2016, when uh, one of the videos that CIG published had a folder on the computer in the background, I think it was. I don't remember exactly what it was, but somebody was able to look on the video and figure out how to get into a folder in CIG and leaked a ton of assets. And some of it was like Terra. It's really, really old stuff. It doesn't look like it'd be anywhere near ready for the game now, but it, it, I guess, I don't know if they were testing it or if it was part of their intent, but the only other time they've talked about Terra was when they showed off some armor in like 2019 or something like that, and that didn't really tell us too much. So I don't know what the plan is there, but Terra would be a fantastic system for the fifth system. I just, I don't know if they have the time for that. Yeah, it would be a really good goal. How many cities in Terra versus Castra? I think Castra only has one major city on top of a mountain. Terra's got multiple, because you've got Terra Nova, which is the capital. Um, and I believe that has two landing zones, maybe? I don't know how many cities there would be, but there's going to be quite a few places to land. Jen is, I think... Is this the main city? Major political and military hub. Uh, doesn't say anything about a landing zone. It actually says it's not habitable. Interesting. Terra Nova is the planet. I'm thinking Terra Prime. Which I'm guessing is just the one they call Terra. Whoops. So you got space stations around the planets too. And then Castra is fairly not as big. I mean, it's they, it's a military system, right? So they're not going to take something with a ton of resources for military. Yeah, you got two bodies here. Castra. No, it's uh, Cascom is the planet. And then Castra 1. I believe Cascom is the one with the city. So you got one landing zone here that is basically just an old military base turned into an area where people can come and come and shield. Yo, Taryn, thank you for the for the biddies, for the pizza fun. Appreciate you. And Zero, thanks for gifting out a sub. Sorry, I missed you on that. Quantum economy can't happen for whatever reason. What's the next solution to making the verse feel alive? Some kind of dynamic model that reacts. And I mean, virtual AI is a big thing to lose from quantum. So I'm not sure about that. But some kind of model that can react... I'm not a great... I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what we could do with economies. Would it be prudent to add systems even if some planets aren't ready? I don't think they should add incomplete systems anymore. I think they could have, but now it feels like it's a bit late for that. I think they're stepping into more of a mode of we're delivering finished content, real, real, realistic content, and I know we're still in the kind of wait until that actually happens. You... If you want to subscribe to it, don't believe it until you see it. I'm absolutely, I believe in that. I am, tend to be more optimistic than most people, and I'm super pumped for space games, and I really do enjoy this game, so I tend to be a little bit crazier about it. But I wholly advise people just, like, you know, sit back and wait and see how it's going in terms of what they're adding and how good the stuff they're adding is. But I do believe that um, they will be... Basically adding just finished systems from here on. Finished. <laughs> With these amounts of systems and size traveling uh, would take hours, that means SC will just be an alt game, one every system or so? No, you're not meant to. That's actually part of the design of the game. The long distances in this game are meant to emphasize the idea that you're not supposed to travel that much. You're supposed to find a planet or a place or a, a sector of a system that you like the gameplay and then get your fill of content. Right now, the game isn't prepared for that. You have to like fly back and forth across systems just to get bounties. 
But the idea is you're basically, some people are going to make their home base at Hurston and then only work in Stanton. Maybe they'll go into another system every once in a while. Maybe you visit a friend or maybe you move your base every couple of weeks. But like the idea is that you're supposed to sort of settle down for a little bit and just enjoy the local gameplay. And that's like that on its own is already big, right? They're talking about making outposts with localized missions, distribution centers where you can spend hours on end inside of. And then on top of that, you're talking about the moons around that planet, the space stations, the asteroids around that planet. And then you're talking about the space stations in between planets and the pirate bases in between planets and the asteroids and the derelict ships. And then you're talking about the other planets and all that stuff. And then you're getting into other star systems. So the hope is that they're creating enough content that you're not actually trying to go from, you know, Stanton to Terra every day or something or every hour. Miss the old helmet HUDs? I do really enjoy what they're showing us for the new ones. Which system has a black hole? I, I don't know. Remember, a couple systems have some pretty crazy stuff going on. Hey, what's up, Malcolm? Uh, Arcane asked, will the reputation system come fully online or in stages, landing for missions, etc., and approximately when? Reputation system is definitely coming in stages. They've already shown that much, I'd say. Um, look at this. <laughs> Look at how much stuff is reputation based. This is how they've been working on it this whole time, right? These are all, you can see these all getting worked on in different areas. And it looks like a lot of this stuff is coming in in the same update. So they worked on these at different times and they're adding them all at the same time. I know shop discounts, sandbox triggers, hostility and gates for missions, I think are all coming in 323 or 4.0. But then you have like reputation V2, which I think kind of breaks out some of this stuff. Um, I think they will continue to build on it in stages. Don't know when, though. I think the, the full reputation system should be done within the next couple of years. Not done, but like... I don't even know how to describe that. Keep hearing Tela Terra is hard, but how much harder than Ellis or Stanton? I think... I think more hard than Stanton, less hard than Ellis. They might, yeah, they have multiple landing zone teams who might, they might be doing some crazy stuff that they haven't been even hinting at with us. And that's like a secret, that's one of those secret hopes in the back of my head. Like, let's just not think about the landing zone team and maybe, maybe they will have done something amazing by the time we think about them again. <laughs> that's actually part of the joy of following Star Citizen as well. It's like, look at how many teams there are here. Look at this. There's so many people working on this game, or, well, Squadron in this game. Granted, a lot of these teams have crossover people, so don't think this is all everybody is, is, is oh, crap, did I just turn on tracking? No? Okay. Um, but you can click into here and find some features. Uh, hacking, jump points, pyro, refineries, and then you can just, like, jump into another one and find some other cool stuff, like uh, Gen 12 Renderer and Server Meshing. Or you can come up here and be like, oh, what's this person working on? Let's see. Uh, EVA Tier 2 and uh, <laughs> Mop and Bucket Gameplay. <laughs> That's for Squadron 42. That's for the AI in that game. Um, but it's cool to be able to look at different teams and kind of focus on one part of the game. And then you were like, oh, yeah, they were working on stuff, too. A little update over there. feel like there needs to be a more valuable in-game investment than currency to work towards in-game. What do you see that is? Uh, reputation, mostly. Reputation and base building, I think, are going to be the big ones. Crafting and building. Uh, a lot of things will be only earnable via high rep missions and things like that. So that'll be probably a, a good way to motivate people. But yeah, the main, the main sort of motivators in this game seem to be money, ships, and reputation and the only thing you can't get with real life money is the reputation so i think that's going to be something they have to really depend on there are, there are probably other things that'll define progression 
um, that I'm not thinking of that can help. But those are the three that I usually think of. And I realize as this game moves forward, the way we think about it definitely changes over time. So ask me again in two years. What do I think of terrain deformation? Most of the people reject it despite CIG can make it limited to a certain height. I think it would be really difficult to do. I'm not sure if they should pursue that. For people who will play mostly solo or with small group friends, what's the progression or end game for those people? Again, reputation. Being able to utilize, hmm, exploiting your skill in game along with um, specific scenarios. I think there's going to be like solo and small group players. So a gigantic org is going to be moving tons of cargo back and forth between systems on whole seas, right? But what if you have a small group that flies flies light in a Zeus, Zeus MK2 cutter? Eh, no, it's not the cutter. What is it called? Yeah, it's the cutter, right? The, the cargo focused Zeus? Zeus cargo boy. <laughs> I guess I I could probably include a little more detail than that. <laughs> Just pulled up some pants. The CL, yes, there we go. So like let's say you and a couple of friends, y'all are are running nice and lean in a ship like this instead of your whole seas. You could probably start to make some ins with the Xion, right? Build up your reputation with the Xion. <laughs> wow. Build up your reputation with the Xion. Be able to go into their space. Be able to access their stores. Get some really unique items because you have the high rep, because you have a low profile, because you're not attracting attention. You can go back into human space and sell that stuff. That might be your end game. Me as a solo player, my end game is collecting as much data as I can and using it to create a business, create a corporation that can, not a corporation, but like to, to handle data as a commodity instead of cargo. Um, other people's, ah, oh, it's the clipper, right? Not the cutter. Other people, their end game might be, this is actually one of my favorites, being a cargo hauler and making enough money that you just keep buying ships and then you just hire people to fly those ships around spending, uh, delivering your goods, right? Like a little trucking company you can. There are, I think there are a lot of things you can do as a solo player or in a small group that, you don't need a big ship for, and you're not going to need a lot of players for. You just kind of got to find that 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 sweet spot in the gameplay that you want and figure out what the most advanced version of it is. I mean, I hope that's uh, how it goes. Your gameplay is complete on day one if you bought ships. Who's? Why are you doing that to buy, to get credits, to buy ships? No, I'm doing it for fun. <laughs> like I, I have more credits than I know what to do with. I don't, I don't really do much for credits right now. Um, I guess I'll do, I'll do it for credits in the future so I can like build my bases and decorate them and buy that stuff and give money to my org and things like that. But I'm mostly doing it to try and get more of a interesting gameplay out of this game. It's freaking wild to me that you can do some of the stuff in this game that you can already do. So I just expect the game to kind of give me more entertainment. And then when I get tired of that, that's when I jump into more of the multiplayer stuff. But I would be, I would definitely suggest don't buy ships if you want to be able to progress towards ships. Um, but for a lot of players, the reputation, the base building, the crafting, the setting up a business, the running the whatever space fantasy they wanted to run is kind of the end game. Don't think that'll ever be, be the reality is there's just not enough content to make you want to stay on one planet that requires insane amount of content. Maybe not one planet, but the planet and its surrounding moons and space stations. What do you think of terrain? Oh, I already read that one. Won't be any progression gating for missions in newer systems. Those will probably be reputation based gates. In fact, I think that's what that said. We were looking at reputation. Uh, gates for missions. Yeah. Doing a more in-depth pass on gating access to missions based off of the player's reputation with corporations and mission givers. So 
basically that person doesn't have any reputation in this system, so they can't do anything there. But there's still sandbox gameplay. Scale they are aiming for is just not fun. It'll take hours to join an org battle, join up with your friends, or just plain, or just plain be solo-ish in a system just with NPCs. But it doesn't take hours right now. How do you feel about the game with the current server meshing stuff going on at the moment? Good. Cautious optimism. Things are looking good. The, uh, the server meshing tests are going pretty well. And I think they're, they're, we're already doing in the game what they were showing us at CitizenCon, which for many people is already different from normal Citizen Cons. The fact that that's happening with nothing other than server meshing is a pretty big deal. So that's good, but I'm still, you know, I'm still waiting and seeing what are they going to do with Alpha 323? How is that going to deliver? And is it going to be stable? Because all of this is leading up to a very, very nice May. May is their second biggest month of the year. And they need to have a big one this year with Invictus Week because um, they're in that final stretch for Squadron and you, we really don't need them to rush anything or to crunch anything. So I do hope they have a good May. I hope they do it in a healthy and responsible way and don't use more ships like this one to... <laughs> To, to boost the sales, but um, I think things are good. And as long as 323 launches pretty well, we're going to have a solid summer, in my opinion. They want it to be fun, so rest assured it won't be the opposite, right? That's also a thing is we, we all speculate about how the game will be, and we have our worries about it not being fun. But the fact of the matter is like a lot of the people who work at this company are people who started out on these kinds of streams and in these kinds of discussions as fans of the game and they're going to make sure it's still fun to play like if they can't bring enough content to each planet then they're going to make it easier to get to other planets that's you gotta you can't the game won't last if they don't fix the problems that it comes up with and luckily that's why we have such a long alpha cycle <laughs> uh it's not lucky Going back to your point on enjoy the local gameplay for a while, how will the large scale PvP wars happen then? It'll take three to four hours just to get to the system it's happening at. Yeah. I mean, if you want to find the biggest battles, it will, might be difficult to find them. Depends on if you're in an org. Like, if you're in an org and you know a PvP battle is going to happen, then so be it. But yeah, if you're in game and you find yourself four or five systems away from your group, that, yeah, it's going to be rough. I would say get it two accounts have an account that's in another system if you want but um that scale and distance is part of the game and i feel like that's how a lot of mmos work right a lot of mmos have just large worlds that you have to travel across in order to reach other things game needs to move into resource gathering and crafting Oh, I can't wait for that. Hello, Luna Maria. Welcome. Good to see you. It's tea time. Uh, reminder, everybody, if you want to ask a question, please put it in brackets and question. That hell, that's that's help, helpy. It helps us out. I'm just catching up on chat. Guess you already answered, but just to elongate the topic, do you think that there will be whole star systems locked by reputation? Yes. Yeah. There are definitely star systems that require security clearance. I don't remember which ones they are. Generally, they're the ones that are more on the the um, borders with other alien species. I think like, I don't know, like pick a system. Karen. Karen? Sharon? Isn't this, isn't this the name for the thing that floated people across the river into Hades or something? Uh, let's see. Discovered late 25th century, the remote system has home to the Messers' most notorious prison. Shortly after the fall of the Messers, when declassified data of the atrocities committed in the system came to light, the Governor's Council of Caron... Caron... Sharon? Sharon? The Karen system. We're going to call it Karen. Officially renounced the recognition by the UEE, becoming the first and only planet to do so. Since then, the planet has been in near constant state of turmoil as various factions have battled for political and social dominance. See, like, you could straight go come in here and spend all your time just f***ing about with these factions in their little war for domination. And maybe that planet will just be a Helldivers 2 planet. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, you can go into the star map and you can look around and there's a lot of lore here. It'll be retconned in, in some way, a lot of it, but there will be some systems I think that are gated. As reputation is the one only in-game incentive, I feel like how they describe gangs in Pyro, they should lean into gatekeeping as exposed for lore. Agreed. It helps. What is Star Citizen Endgame overall? Do some game loops to earn money, buy ships, and what next? Build bases? Farm resources? Create cosmetics? Sell those cosmetics? Apply those cosmetics to ships? I don't know, man. I don't, I've, this is the first MMO I've ever played. I don't know what the end game for MMOs is. I've always played games where the end game was just having fun. Like, my most played online games are Halo and Civ Six. So, I never really was like a keep, I don't know, keep like uh, finding new end game stuff. I don't know what MMO end game stuff normally is. Like, that's my... I focus a lot on the development of this game, but when it comes to talking about other MMOs and how they compare, I try to bring other people in for expertise because I always see the end game as just kind of complicating more of what you're already doing and involving other players in it. Was I able to get in the tech preview? I did. I flew around a little bit. It was good times. I don't, I don't know if we meshed servers, but we were in there. All right, catching up, catching up. Do you think 323 will be delayed? I don't. I think they'll delay features if they need to, but 323 maybe will slip like like a week or two, but I'm pretty sure they're going to want to have 323.1 in by Invictus week. People who don't want to do the setup and can't find content they enjoy in their own time constraints, then it might not be the game for them. Not every game is for every player. That's also true. This is a this is still a niche game. They're expanding it quite a bit. But it's a niche game and it's not gonna be for everybody. Like they they do a lot in this game that I think people would would say is not respecting your time. And Definitely in the current game, your time's not respected. You could do all the stuff you want to do, and then at the end of it all, one little glitch kills you and sends you to prison or something, and you're done. So right now, the game is definitely not for everyone. But even when it's finished, this is still a game that just might not be all that fun. In that case, though, I would suggest checking out Arena Commander because you'll be able to do immediate fleet battles in Arena Commander. And by the time the game is really popping off, it could, it could be hundreds of people getting into custom games in Arena Commander, running custom fleet battles and stuff and not having to worry about going to other systems the persistent universe is for the people who want that kind of large-scale mmo experience arena commander i think is going to be for the people who want to just get gameplay immediately and and be able to get in the game and get out in a couple of minutes if they want to do you think that the mythical 100 systems will ever be implemented or even feasible no i don't i don't think we're going to get all 100 systems I hope we do, but I really i am not setting my hopes on that. This is a lot of work here. This is including multiple star systems, and what is not featured here is a completely separate hum uh, alien race in the lore called the Kurthak, and they are supposedly out this way, on the other side of the Xion. On top of that, one of the theories that people have for the Vanduul, that's this red, these red folks over here, they're starting to push more into human and Banu space and here in the middle, one theory is that there is a bigger force out here that is pushing the Vanduul inwards. So, like, there's a lot of lore and stuff they could do to expand this game. And I think by the time they ever even approach 100 systems, they're probably going to want to do something different, right? Like, we're talking 15, 20 years from now. This game is in depth. There are, there are short films about it. Maybe there's, like, a movie or a TV show. I don't know. We don't know how how successful it might be. But, like... This IP could expand a lot, and I feel like at one point you're like, I don't really want to do all these systems. Let's talk more about these people pushing on the Vanduul or the Kurthak over with the, the Xion, or let's talk about like some more of the interesting stories in Banu space. But we'll see. Whatever you want to do is your end game. I do sympathize with like the call for an end game. I get what you guys are saying. There needs to be 
convincing content. And to be honest, CIG themselves haven't done a great job of expressing what that convincing content is. Honestly, I think that up until now, like we, we're just now hearing about Star Citizen 1.0 and they want to lay out the roadmap for that, which I think is a good idea because I don't think there's anybody who's a fan of Star Citizen that could tell you what exactly Star Citizen 1.0 is supposed to look like or what the finished game is supposed to look like. We all say kind of how we want to play it. I talk about how it looks based on what they've shown us and how they've developed, but nobody really knows and um, they need to be better about that for sure. They need to start to set people's expectations better because a lot of people are jumping into this thinking it's a game that's basically ready to play. It takes 10 minutes max to prep and get out of your ship. If it's taking you hours every session, you're doing something wrong. Prep takes one session. Every other session you pick items and go. There's also like, we're going to have loadouts. You're going to have tons of persistence. So you're not trying to do a, a setup every time. You're going to be waking up in your own spaceship. Like, don't forget that our spaceships are basically going to take the place of our homes at some point, which is another reason to pick a ship with a bed instead of a ship without. Maybe you want to not live in any planet or not live in any system permanently, but just sleep in your ship in between missions. Is it just you or has it been a while since we've heard about building interiors? Hey, one of my favorites. That's a good topic, Fanric. I like that one. Building interiors are... One of the more incredible things, I think, coming to Star Citizen, that you're absolutely right. We haven't really heard much about. Will be more appropriate in someone like. Uh... Okay, okay, all right. This one's exciting. Thank you for bringing this up. So, building interiors are like the answer to the localized gameplay that we're seeing with distribution centers and space stations, but in cities, because they've got so much real estate in cities, and it's just kind of wasted. Like, not wasted that they should fill all the cities with stuff, but there's a ton of buildings in, like, R Corp. Like, look at this. Uh, Oops. Look at how much city so space we have. It's something there's so many buildings. There's so much stuff you could do. Um, and we need to have reasons to use them, which is what Ian is explaining here. Many interiors. It's a perfect opportunity to put in a lot of play space. Now, with the players flying around these buildings they've been largely urban landscapes um fairly uninteractable you know we've done a few uh landing pads to uh get the players in and out there but really the the real good stuff was on the inside so up until now we've been on the outside wondering about the inside and today we're going to talk about the inside looking outside <laughs> I love that. I'm going to skip all of this because it's a really long video. This is basically like they're adding all of the different gameplay areas to buildings and archetypes. This includes things like habitation for you guys. So um, this could be a big way that they either monetize the game or this could just be a large part of a large part of also your end game content that we've been talking about. Oh, my camera's a little off to the side, isn't it? We're talking about end game and... It might be that one of the things you do for Endgame is collect nice residences, right? In all the fancy planets, all the best apartments. Or maybe you want to get like that cyberpunk feel and live in a mega building. I don't know. But like, it's kind of like GTA Online, I guess. Find residences, um, f get money. I don't know. I don't know what they say anymore. That was like a, that was 2000s. I'm aging myself. But here's some of the highlights of what it looks like in there. So what did we learn this week? Well, we what did we learn this week, Jared? So yeah, building interiors is a good one. We haven't heard about it in a while because the team who is working on it is currently working on a lot of the pyro stuff. That was the Montreal studio, I believe. I think was doing a lot of building interiors and they have been pretty busy. Let's see here. Montreal Sandbox, locations, concept, art, and narrative. Yeah, so Montreal was working on it, and Montreal's a busy, busy, busy body. Um, they've been working on underground facilities for a while. Before that, they were working on the derelict outposts last year. So I think once these underground facilities are done, we might start hearing about building interiors again. 
Did they ever mention if they were still planning on putting AC into the PU? Remember there being that was said that you could play AC while on long quantum travel routes. I, I think they still will. And I think that's a really good idea because, again, you could just be in the PU playing some more action-oriented gameplay um, with other players fighting in those giant fleet battles without having to wait to get there. Or you could fly to your fleet battle while playing in fleet battles in your AC server. Boom. Yo, dog. Lyrith, thank you for the sponsor. The the membership on YouTube, appreciate you. Make sure to check out those exclusive videos on the homepage on the channel. They're a good time. What else do we got here? Am I just being overly dramatic thinking the Polaris will be ready for Invictus? And when do you think we will get Castra? I don't, I, I, I don't think the Polaris is going to be ready for Invictus. I think they've got more gameplay they need to get figured out by then. Like, if they launch to the Polaris without engineering gameplay, eh, it just feel weird. Just wouldn't feel right. I just realized I'm not even on the camera. There we go. Yeah, if, why are you all the way over there? What is with this? Just constantly in the wrong place. There you go. Why don't you zoom out a little bit? Give me some space. Let me breathe. There we go. Um. Yeah, like we wouldn't even have engineering gameplay by Invictus, right? I don't know. I don't know. They're they're close on the art for sure, uh, but the exterior is still in gray box, I believe. Carries dead souls to Hades, right? Oh my God, am I that far back? Oh man, I am so far behind. All right. Do you think they will have profitable hauling routes that go between systems? Absolutely. That's your haul e. What do you think about money sinks as a means to elongate game hours instead of just price increases, let's say for ships? Money sinks, yeah, for sure. We've got insurance. We're going to have storage fees and, and hangers. We're going to have um, the cost of respawning, the cost of spawning our ships, fuel prices, oxygen pricing, food, all that kind of stuff. we got a lot of stuff we'll have to pay for in this game. Have you thought about how the different systems will work their prison systems? I don't think every system will have a prison, actually, which is probably going to make things pretty interesting. But they've got a lot of work to do on the prison system. Charging players five bucks for a passport to an area. I believe they are going to stick to their whole no DLC stuff on here. I think they should stick more to cosmetics and 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 uh, real estate and stuff. Oh, I see a Jake in the chat. Hello, Jake. Welcome. Hey, Cred, thank you for the sub, by the way, with the Prime. Jake is the American community manager for CIG. And they also stream a ton of, uh, well, different stuff, actually. I got to catch some Last of Us, which was great. But they were also playing some, was it Kingdom Hearts the other day? And some Star Citizen? Fantastic. Good fun. Can we get a shout out? Can we get a shout out for the Jake? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Um, we're just kind of talking about all the things. Lots of theory crafting going on in here. Lots of speculation, folks. I don't work for CIG, by the way. Sometimes I see comments that I feel like may, people might think that I, <laughs> I am associated with them. I'm not. <laughs> Definitely not. I, um, I don't think they have any employees in Turkey. But uh, so all the stuff that I'm saying, you can take with a grain of salt. It's just based on what I've seen. I could be wrong. I'm just another person that's watching the game's development. You know. Hey, Lyra, thank you for the super chat. Had no idea you streamed as well. Stream schedule? Yeah, uh, we post the stream schedule every week on our Discord. But more reliably, you can just. You know, know that we will be live at this time on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, unless we announce on Discord. Um, but yeah, like the stream, I do a lot of development talks, but we also do some gameplay sometimes. How do you think they're going to solve the problem of rotating physics grids between meshed servers? I don't know. I think I also wonder how they're going to handle the atmospheric and gravity lines around planets. It's not a gradient, and I'm, I'm guessing it's not. it will never be a gradient. So I don't know how the servers will work with the rotations and stuff like that. 
with all the new systems in the works and such, do you think Stanton will have a new major landing zone? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think they're going to stick to the four they have there. All right. All right. We're catching up here. We're catching up. I'm zooming forward. All right. Not sure how other MOs have done it, but could you see them long after 1.0 uploading new systems and charging players? Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, I don't think they're going to charge people for new systems. That would be... Uh, I hope not. Will we get more quests and missions that are based around city? Maybe some locations that can be accessed by foot? My friend, I love the questions when I know where the answer is for... Thank you. Who Who is that? Where is that? Warlock. Beautiful question. Makes you feel super accomplished. <laughs> um, in this same panel, they talk about this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Actually, I think it was that same part that I was looking at with you, with you all. Listen larger, to this. A more established community. Now, as a player, it will mean a lot more to explore and do at any single individual location with a localized and personal feeling mission types that might see you moving around a single settlement to complete objectives or doing short hop missions between clusters of settlements on a single planet. So you might head up to a ridge to repair some wind turbines. You could counter an outlaw attack from a neighboring outpost or on the opposite side, you might be stealing or destroying vehicles for the criminal gang that you're working for. But in the art department, we always say show, don't tell. So let's stop looking at slides and let's have a look at some of the locations in game. So that was the last that I think we heard about that. And actually, one of the first times, now that I think of it, that we've really heard confirmed that more local gameplay was planned for these small locations, it's kind of assumed. But it was nice to hear them say that. They're focusing on that as they get into more of these unique locations. So good question. Do you think they'll have some, if not all, city residences as instanced like the coming hangars? Yes, I think that they're going to use instancing a lot for habs and different areas inside of buildings. Are the distribution centers the same as the underground facilities? Uh, they've kind of transformed. From what I understand, I actually have a video I've been sitting on that I've been meaning to release about that. Um, the underground facilities we saw in 2022 have turned into distribution centers from what I'm understanding. They kind of took the part of that that they liked and wanted to get out first. I feel like what we're seeing in distribution centers are the tier zero or the tier one of underground facilities from 2022, but not necessarily to say that every distribution center will have an underground, if that makes sense. So I think that from here, they're going to start to build underground sections onto these distribution centers, and those will have more mission area and, and things to do. Um, and I think... Yeah, I think like that's kind of the whole mess of game development. Like it's sort of an idea that has morphed and changed and been split a little bit and separated. And why does my camera keep blinking at me? <laughs> Weirdo. Do I think the Polaris price will increase when flight ready? Yes, I do. I have no idea how much it is now, though, so I don't know how much it would be. Probably an expensive ship. Ooh, we're getting close. We're almost caught up. Senior videos and stream on and off. Hope with 323 will come like a shooting star. A lot of players will find your channel with your hard work and dedication as well deserved. Thank you. Me and Mrs. Tomato have cherished the journey of making this all happen and uh, looking forward to a lot longer doing it. It's not going to lie. It's not been an um, incredibly smooth journey. <laughs> star Citizen has had some 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 moments but it's certainly been a memorable one a fun one and we're happy to keep going thanks for for dropping by ali and joe 10 thank you for the five subs too on twitch look at y'all dropping in here with the love appreciate you just renewed your sub the other day too isn't it like 38 months or some something like that in it will your argo cargo ever get a bed Maybe if it lets you carry a bed as cargo. That's just how it rolls. You were a CIG employee for like five years before you were actually a CIG employee. <laughs> it's just the natural process. You're playing some Chain of Memories. Play Kingdom Hearts every Saturday. Sora Saturdays. I see that pop up.
So is AC just a video game in lore? Yes, absolutely, exactly. What's up, Frisch? How you doing? All right, we got another question here. There we go. Uh, is the telemetry website feature still down? Last time you checked, we couldn't see how we rank up. Just says, please log in. Why don't we check together? I will load that over here while we go on another question. Malismo, thanks for the two subs, mate. Data unavailable for selected filters. How dare you? Last month? Oh, yeah, it might not be working. Wait, there is no 321. Where's 322? Oh my God. There it is. No, I'm not seeing anything pop up. It's possible that it's not working. Why would they not sell a Banu starter pack that lets you play as a Banu from their point of view and so on for other races? Because they don't have the races ready. They might do that maybe later on when those races are playable, but even then I think you should probably have to start as a human. Knots! Thanks for the sub, mate. Yo, you guys are y'all showing the love on Twitch. Appreciate you. Gotta sit up straight. Nine months too. Little Twitch baby. You and Board Gamer are absolute chads for SC coverage. Have you ever played Atlas? That was the best we have seen in a game of server mesh tech. Um Atlas. No, I don't think so. What is that? Oh yeah, decompression on ships is gonna be cool. Question, will my Midas fish be able to f swim in my hangar's fish tank? I, I've, I'm gonna answer that question with another question. Do you wanna see your fish swim in zero G? Cause that could be fun. Yeah, I think apartments are gonna be hang uh, instance like hangars. Mostly kidding, but you do wonder what fees could be introduced. It's going to be quite a few. Definitely stuff for like storing stuff in hangars or keeping ships. That's the thing that a lot of people who are buying a ton of... Um, people who are buying a ton of different ships might not realize. I don't know how exactly CIG is going to handle it. But I do think that having a lot of ships could be an issue. Because like you might... I. I they might not do this, but I think that you, once you spawn those ships, you have to pay to store them, right? As a money sink. And again, maybe that's not a thing, but uh, it does kind of help as a deterrent. I'm sure people with a lot of ships will hate to hear that. But um, storing ships and cargo is kind of part of the gameplay, right? Like if, if ships and cargo are a commodity you can make money from, then being able to store them without any sort of repercussion, I guess it doesn't mean you can game the system, but it certainly means the system will be easier for cargo haulers. So I feel like that's part of the cargo hauling loop and the idea of transporting ships, because we also know the Liberator is a ship that you're meant to make money by transporting other ships. If, if there's no penalty for storing those ships before transporting them, um, that means that that profession would be a lot higher paying than it would be otherwise. What is a UGF? Don't make me go over all that. That's such a long one. But yeah, it stands for underground facility if that's what you were asking. Prince for 600i when price increase? Probably when the rework happens for the 600i. I'm not part of Ivacati now. Plan to be. A UGF is just a purposeless building? Why why is that? Doesn't it depend on what they put inside the building? Name a video game that had a smooth journey. Had some pretty smooth races in the old Wipeout Pures. <laughs> It's a good game. Fun game. 
curious as to what advice I have to give to a new player on getting better at dogfights. Focus more on your, your own ship's movement than on shooting the other player. I think the best thing you can do in a dogfight is get hit less rather than hit more. Because even if you are a player... Get the heck out of here. Sheesh. Even if you are a player who can't kill other people, if you are a good target that other people can't hit, then all you need is a good wingman and you can win some good, good fights. So I think that learning how to evade is better than learning how to hit... But generally, I think getting into Arena Commander is a good way to do it because you're just getting fast combat over and over. And repetition definitely helps. But I would look up some of the guides online on YouTube. Uh, two folks, three three channels actually, I would recommend for combat are um, Avenger1, um, uh, Jonathan Winters, and um, Legacy Video Guides, I think is the name of that one. I don't know if they've been doing anything lately. I haven't seen it in a while. I know John has been a little bit uh, taking some time away from Star Citizen over the last year. But those are three channels I'd check out for training on that. Do I think we'll get a portable sleeping bag to bed log with when on foot? I think that we should. I would be... I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate for that. Because that allows us to have our bed logging and make it so that saving and logging off is something you have to think about and plan for. But it also allows for all the people who are like very screechy about the bed logging to be able to still log off where they want to. Solid balance. I, I would like the idea. Then you have to craft the cot. You know, you can't just have one. You have to take up a spot on your backpack to carry it. All that kind of stuff. Do I think AI will be more active in hunting criminal players after the server meshing? Yes. AI in general will be more responsive after server meshing, it seems. Oh, we love this community. Community is... I mean, that's what made Star Citizen succeed, right? No, I don't think people were talking about Star Atlas. I think they were talking about a game called Atlas. Describing it as Ark at Sea. Failed pirate game. Pasted over Ark, but the server meshing was pretty good. That's cool. When did it come out? Uh, the new movie glass doesn't have any changes including regarding orgs from what I know. Do I think we'll ever be able to sell ships? Yes. I do. But I don't know how that happens. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've caught up to chat. Oh my god. I fell behind so hard there. All right. Aren't they going to try moving away from bed logging eventually and more just log out not being tied to beds? I hope not. Where did you hear that? I've heard people say that, but I don't think I've heard any developers say something like that. And I really, really hope that's not the case. I don't think people realize how important bed logging is to stop this game from falling apart when it comes to like fleet battles and org battles and stuff. Imagine if you didn't have to bed log and logins weren't actually tied to beds, and you could just fly a ship on board another ship and then spawn your entire org on board that ship. I guess there are things that they could do to stop that too, but I feel like there are a lot of edge cases around the fact that all of these ships were built with the idea that beds were tied to logging in, and that was an important part of what made a long range versus a short range versus a multi-crew versus a solo ship. Are attachable helmets coming in 323? Do you think when you click on drink, the helmet should open the clothes, then close after? <laughs> like open the visor so you can just drink through that? Um, no, I think you should have to take your helmet off. I think if you hit drink, it takes your helmet off for you, but maybe doesn't put it back on. So that'd be a little weird. But I don't think attachable helmets are coming in 323. Okay, I'm falling behind again already. Thoughts on base building and do you think it'll be ready for the end of the year? I think we could see a very basic implementation of something regarding base building or crafting by the end of the year, but 
I don't think it'll be ready in any significant sense. But I think it's a good direction for the game. We've been waiting long enough. Do I think mining will get a rework to be more lucrative in 323 and be more in line with other professions? Um, well, the economy team is touching a lot of stuff in 323, so it's certainly possible that the balances that you get for payouts and, and um, for certain commodities changes. But they didn't announce any specific balance passes for mining in 323, and since we did just see one in 319, I think it was, I don't, I don't think we're really due for one just yet. I think it was here. No? Is it 320? Or was it not on the release view? It might not have been on the release view. They do have missions planned for mining, and they haven't said anything about those. They were doing mining missions last year. They were supposed to release around the same time as salvage missions, but they didn't. So we might see mining missions that do have better payouts and more reliable gameplay for you. Don't know when that's coming, though. Sorry if you answered this, I ran out of coffee. <laughs> Do I think they'll release content like Xenothreat soon after Invictus or only after 4.0? Content like Xenothreat? No, I think we'll get that before 4.0. They like to run the global events pretty regularly. Just the refining that sucks. Not sure if you or any other players missing this, but I do think interior models of helmets should be back, preventing clear view so people could run more without helmets around. I agree. I actually was just talking about that last week or the week before. I liked being able to see the helmet. It adds a sense of, like, presence to me. And I under totally understand the idea that it's blocking your view and that's not really great because you only have a certain field of view and stuff. Um, I think keeping it super minor is good, but I do like seeing the helmet in my view. And that might make me a pleb. I don't know. You fell behind on Star Citizen's development and got all caught up thanks to me. Ah, oh, thanks to you and your videos. Last looked at SC Dev Progress like three or four years ago. Glad to see things are improving. They're improving quite a bit. I made a video probably like three years ago now uh, that was talking about phase four. Is that three or four years ago? That might have been four years ago. Phase four of development. And that went a lot slower than I had thought it would. Um, I thought that more of the systems they had been working long term were coming in. And it feels like that's what's happening now. Uh, definitely like during that phase that was the phase of squadron 42 and now they're kind of starting to move things back which is great towards star citizen um so if you're just getting caught back up with star citizen now you're coming at the perfect time because like basically anybody who has been hardcore into star citizen since the year 2017 has been waiting for server meshing and now finally we're all seeing it actually happen i just 20 freaking 17. like i have been hyped for, went to the midnight release of, played the absolute shit out of, and then completely forgotten about video games in that span of time. <laughs> I could go about the whole, yeah, I, I left college, and I got married, and I had five kids, and I solved cancer, and I went to the moon, and Star Citizen still is now. No, but it really feels like that kind of energy. Like... It's been a long time we've been waiting for server meshing. And there's not a single other thing in all of Star Citizen's development that you could point towards and be like, everybody will be happy about this. It's good times. Tulumba to that.
Yeah. That's really yummy. It's really yummy. You need a second. Yeah, they've they've definitely alluded to server meshing for a long time. Um, much longer than going back past 2017. But as far as like their public, let me show you. Actually, let's. Why don't we just do a little dive back? Like, there are probably plenty of people here who haven't seen this video. Um. First legitimate. Is this it? Actually, it might have been 2018 when they, when they like, yeah, it was actually 2018 when they properly came out and were like, this is our long-term goal. And this is part of why you're starting to hear them talk about 1.0. It's also why I don't understand the people who are like, it's too early to talk about 1.0. They were talking about 4.0 in 20, 2018. <laughs> like... How is it too early to talk about 1.0? They need a new freaking goal. I'm sorry. I just, I don't understand that angle. It's so strange to me. So back in 2018, Citizen Con, I need to find, I need the actual presentation. I need all of it. Oh man, this is not easy to find. Um, Citizen Con... Okay, is it this one? Complete broadcast, opening, graphics and tech, keynote address. No, it is 2018. 2949. No, this is the anniversary. Here we go, 2948. Road to release, okay. Thank you. Hey. Still slightly concerned about server meshing? Oh completely free to be concerned about it. We don't know how far it'll scale yet. Do hope it does well, but there's always the possibility it doesn't. Woody, I've got a little bleep button here that I can that I can use. Do you think they will hit a wall after 323 and be back to slow trickle content since most of this is just ports from Squadron? No, I don't. Because a lot of the stuff, like, it's like it's stuff from Squadron, but there's also stuff that's being worked on that they're not even talking about right now. And the stuff that's coming in 323 isn't going to be complete. Some of it will be built on in the patches after that. You're having issues. You trick out your ship, click save, and nothing saves. Tried verifying, relogging, never saves. Have you heard of there being a bug about this? I haven't. Is it all your ships that do that? After server meshing, what's the next big milestone? 1.0. That's I, that's why they're talking about it. In my opinion, there's, there's no... They, they should talk about it now. Because you think about it, by the time 4.0 comes out, people are going to be like, okay, what's coming next? Like, you're literally asking that right now. What's, what's next? If server meshing is this big thing and we're about to watch, it's literally the goal they set out six years ago, then what are they going to do after that? They can't wait until after 4.0 is out to say that, so they have to say it before. They're not going to say it in some random ISC. It's going to come in a letter from the chairman. So would they wait? Four more months after 4.0 comes out, I know that's a, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Would they make four to six to eight months until server meshing comes out and do another letter for the chairman? Or would they just talk about it here when they're already talking about 4.0 kind of starting to come into view and, and server meshing being a thing that's actually successfully tested? Because if server meshing is working in game, that's a reason for a letter from the chairman. If 4.0 comes out, I mean, that's a reason, but I just don't see them making another one this year. So it feels like they are setting up for these questions. What comes next? Where are they going? And that's not to say that Star Citizen 1.0 is anywhere near being complete or finished. I don't think they said that in the letter. I don't think they were trying to. I think they were just trying to say, hey, this is our <laughs> second road to release. You know. Star Citizen and their roads. All right, so here he is actually saying that. It will be an uh, ongoing living, breathing game. Uh, and oh. and we back up a little bit. To that. Come on. A little more. Universe. Yeah, Chris. Playing. Yeah, talking. Uh, hey, Chris. Yeah, I got the I got the back phone back. Yeah. Um, we're going through your Citizen Con 20, 2018, man. And it's, it's a lot of talking. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it says organization systems up here, too. Yeah, what happened with that? Organizations suck. Okay, gotcha, yeah. Well, you're talking a lot about server meshing. We'll, we'll get back to that. Um, but honestly, to me, it's kind of looking like a scam, man. You got to work on that. All right, buddy. See you later. Thank you. Cool. We haven't we haven't used the back phone in a while. Glad to have it back. It was in the other room getting rained on. <laughs> if you listen closely, you can probably hear the water falling from our ceiling in the other room. Oh, I can definitely hear it. It's awful. It literally rains in our house. Okay. Where were we? He's talking about server meshing. One of the biggest things, that's why we call it the persistent universe, is that it has a life and a persistence and people's actions will mean something in it. And that's a very, very important part of the 11th pillar. And the last one, if we go forward, Paul, uh, is server meshing. So when we get server meshing, uh, that is, we think, the last piece of the puzzle to have the full game experience. And this is our ability to go, you know, right now we have about 50 players on a server. We probably will be able to increase that number because of bank coloring and stuff. But it's still going to cap out at a certain level. With server meshing, we'll be able to get to thousands of players playing concurrently in the same location, star systems. They're not all going to be able to have a thousand people dogpiling together. They won't be able to render it all at the same time. But you certainly will be able to have, you know, a thousand people on the planet of Hurston, for instance. Um, and uh, so the server meshing is the last key piece because that will allow us to have a truly massively populated universe of players as well as AI and having servers that dynamically scale up and down to take care of the processing needs of that. So and, uh, this so is literally people, this, this was what a lot of this, one of the things that people think is part of the scam, like they lay out these lofty goals. He talks about this dynamic scaling server tech and this stuff with thousands of players, whatever. And people think that it's literally never going to happen, that they're just spouting this stuff in order to get money and they're not going to make the game. Now that we're seeing server meshing coming along, that's probably not going to change for a lot of people. In, in my experience, looking at the comments that people leave over the years as things do start to come along, the argument just kind of changes. Like... I think it's huge that this clip exists in this video about road to release and it validates the fact that we're now seeing that actually happen. It's a long-term goal. You don't really get the chance to see such a long-term goal like this play out and actually happen. And I think that speaks a lot towards uh, their efforts. How long till beta? Ah, it's, that's a complicated question. I don't think they're gonna do a beta. Uh, it's what the rumors are saying. It might just be like a sort of very polished post alpha experience for a while. I don't know, man. It's like what what's names, right? <laughs> feature com feature com content complete, whatever it is. Um, I think we're still like three years, two years, two two to three years away from a feature complete. Not even feature complete, man. I don't know what to call it. I think there's still plenty of stuff that's going to be added after that. So. I don't even know how to refer to it. What is server meshing? It's the backend technology that helps them to expand the scale of the game. I'm going to just point you towards a video that I recently did on it. Um, this, this one goes through the long sh sh this one goes through what server meshing is, why it's important, and uh, what it'll bring to the game. I'll drop that link in the chat if you'd like. This one will give you a much better explanation than I can in 30 seconds here on this stream. When do you think that server meshing will drop? Do you think that CIG can ship it until September? Yeah, I think they could get 4.0 in by September. I'm still, you know, going to set my sights on later in the year, but it's possible. You need to know what is the target and they need to push to that end goal. Yeah, it's kind of helps with like uh, um, credibility if we know what they're going towards. Like if we didn't know what they were going towards, wouldn't really be able to judge them for it. And we love to judge. They're working on an update for the progress tracker to know what's coming for 1.0, right? Yep. Are you actually saying naughty words when you bleep yourself or are you just pretending? 
<laughs> I'm saying all the f***ing worst. <laughs> ah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I let them slip. I <laughs> feel a little... <laughs> oh, God. I feel like a bad guy. How's the server mission going to work 100 systems? Because that sounds very costly. It is very costly. That is one of the big things. Um, how many servers do they want to allocate to each system? And how many shards can they afford to have that's replicating those systems? It's It can get expensive. That's why they don't want to stick on static server meshing for too long. Because they can't even shut those down if they wanted to. We need a new playlist. What is this? We still don't have any alien factions or any of their systems yet either. With that being said, wouldn't 1.0 be like another decade out? Looking at the star map, the alien systems are further on the edge of the galaxy while Stanton and Pyro are relatively central. I don't know if we're going to have alien factions for 1.0. Maybe one or two. I mean, the Vanduul, probably. And the Banu, I can imagine. I don't know if we'll see their systems, though, in 1.0. I think 1.0 is just going to be human space. They are working on an update for the progress tracker. I think deeper bounty hunting will allow for more game loops, and the more game loops, the better. Being a pirate means someone can hunt you. Yeah, the bounty hunting that we heard about with the quantum economy was so cool. Um, it's unfortunate that it seems to have been delayed so much. Some interesting things that we have seen worked on for bounty hunting, though. The new jail locations where you can turn in your bounties. So for those who like bounty hunting and are very used to just going place, blowing up player and getting paid, you're going to have to actually go to a place, disable a player's ship or that player, uh, restrain them, capture them, put them in one of these little prison pods, transport them into one of these jail cells, and then get paid for your bounty. It's like bounty hunting as a whole profession is going to get way more intensive. And like you said, it'll include more gameplay. There's also, there's also the restraints that they added to the game that we've been hearing about for a while. They've been working on their handcuffs and their pulleys and rope and stuff. Um, and one of the new additions is here. When you take someone down, item, sorry, and that's the restraint. you can take them out. So with the restraints, okay, let's take them down first. One more. Oh. Okay, so with the restraints, we're going to turn him over. We're going to cuff his hands. We're going to cuff his legs. And so you'll have to take them and transport them and, you know, probably do some now, not up, so nice things. To, don't, don't, don't do that. Um, Matt, he said 50 players in the server because back then it was 50 players. 100 players only happened in 2022. So that's relatively new. When do you think that server meshing will drop? Wait, am I seeing doubles? How did I just read that again? Will it be region-based or just everyone on a server on a release, on a f on full release? Um, it'll be region-based, I think. I don't think they can do a worldwide shard. Light speed is only so fast, and the signals, you know, you get a lot of lag. When do I think that server... What? Wait, what's going on? Is chat repeating or something? Am I somehow scrolling through the same thing over and over? I am so lost. Now I'm 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 so confused. <laughs> I keep seeing the same question. I'm not sure if it's getting asked multiple times or if my chat is glitching out. What are my thoughts on the Hornet MK2? Is it good? Have I flown it? I've flown it. I haven't fought in it though. I don't know if it's good. I'm not I'm not a combat person really. Um 
It sounds pretty solid though, from what I've heard. It's got, I think, two size fours and two size threes. Something like that. Like that thing's gonna put a fight up on a Super Hornet. Do I think CIG will plague us with the Killmonger hair? <laughs> no, I actually don't. Honestly, I'd love to see more hairstyles that are diverse like it though. I usually I just go and I either get like a big fro or a small fro, but I'd like to get like I'd like to be able to do braids or twists or something. In one of my videos, one of the devs was talking about how even after the finish line that was going to stop, they were not going to stop adding and improving things. Yeah. I mean, as an MMO, you know, you, you can't stop where the game dies. What's up, Fear Factory? Why is Mrs. Tomato not shooting me today? She's downstairs today. To be quite honest, this temporary room that we're using for our streams and stuff is not very comfortable um, and not very big. My desk takes up almost the entire part of the room. And on top of that, which you guys can't see, which is right, can I? If I move the camera, can you can't really, you wouldn't be able to tell, I don't think. Um, basically right under the camera right here is actually where some of our house has received water damage. So the floor underneath my desk it's kind of buckled into a sort of a mountain. I actually can't move my chair all the way over because it stops. Um, this house is f***ed up. So that makes it really hard to get in and out of her desk and it's super uncomfortable. So she's downstairs because that's like where, where she should be. It's not, this isn't the most comfy room to be in. There's also mold on the ceiling. So like, that's not good to breathe in. She's allergic to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Tomato. Lyra, thank you for the super chat. Thoughts on space combat visuals. The zoom feature is a must. Distances in space like EVE battles, they are just boring unless you watch the big ones. I like the visuals. I like the zooming in. I think it makes sense. I, I do hope that the combat is balanced in a way that I don't feel like I'm always zooming in. I would like to still fight normally. And I think the zooming in really is for bigger ships, but um, no, I, I like the way it's going. And maybe I'm more of an arcadey player because of that, but... I love choice, you know? If I don't have to zoom in, I won't. Hello. I was summoned. Mrs. Tomato just burst into the room. I was summoned. Oh my God, Jesus, ah, who said she should shoot me? Ah, stop, <laughs> abuse. I Jesus, I take it back. Get out of here, you beast. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we. We get into trouble. I'll just put this down here. Back to it. The crazy, insane person. I think she did. She go all the way back downstairs. <laughs> she just ran all the way away. Um. Do 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 do. Wait, did I just see another <laughs> repeat? Wow, you got all the way downstairs already. Nice. Do I think they'll have dedicated prisoner ships to move prisoners from local prisons to major facilities? Oh, um, kind of. We do have the Cutlass Blue. This is like a dedicated prison transport ship. Like it literally has the bays in the back. And I think the, um, the Zeus MR also has prison pods. Yeah, like look at this. They're very well, actually, you know what? That's probably a, a transportation mission. If you go to, um, oh, I love, oh, who was that? You just connected some dots, Walker. I like it when we do that. Um, if you come here and you listen to them talking about like different types of In the game. And different cargo, cargo, some special cargo, what they don't put here is people, but I do think that's a reasonable cargo transport mission. And you can only take that cargo transport mission if you've got car, uh, prisoner transport pods. This is also the Zeus MR has them, I think. Don't know if they show the back. Yeah, so it's just like this. Somebody load the picture, come on. What? 
Why am I on eBay? Okay, whatever. Here, you can see there's prisoner transport in the back here. So, like, there are ships that have that dedicated prisoner transport. That very well could be a mission for those ship types. Imagine 323 is already out. What will be your new most annoying thing since the star map will be fixed? Ooh. The lack of a proper beacon system. No, that doesn't really affect me that often. Like, it's annoying, but things that... Like, integral broken parts of this game. VOIP. They really need to fix the voice protocol in this game so that we can start using it and the game can become more social and we can actually in interact with people in the game. I want to be able to load into this game and not touch Discord, you know? I want to be able to get into the game with people I know and just freaking hear the actual comms and have some kind of tiered comms and an org group. I just, yeah, the, the whole comms system would be a really nice thing to see updated after that. I don't know if it's my most annoying thing, but it definitely, it comes to mind. Another major thing they need to work on is in, is complete balance, component balancing, components and weapons and etc. Practically been irrelevant since 316 or something like that. Indeed, Icor. Although you did say question. <laughs> I do agree with you though. Do I think some iteration of base building will be implemented in the next year? Yes, something real basic. Anvil Hawk, what's what's going on with the passenger bay? You liked using it for search and rescue missions before they moved the seat. Yeah, without the, I mean, we'll be able to use it once it's redone. I think you'll still be able to put your search and rescue people in there if you need to. What do I think is the right way to monetize the game after 1.0? Shall they stop ship sales? I think ship sales should not be always ongoing. Um, I think that anything under probably like 70 bucks should come as a game package so you can get ships as in, like in that sense um i think that the starting ships for each profession maybe should be on sale at certain times and i think that since they'll still keep releasing ships um people should be able to buy ships when they first come out mm, actually hold on on that i gotta think about that um I don't know about that part, actually, because I did I was if, if they do keep doing that, I think that the concept shale, sale thing should not have any sort of time exclusivity. So like if there were still concept ship sales, the only thing that those people who buy the concept ships should ship should be is just the guarantee that they're getting that ship, which, you know, isn't really much. It's a digital asset. Um, I think some level of ship sales will persist, but I think that mainly where the money should come from is cosmetics, um, ship skins interior skins, accessories, furnitures, paints, uh, all that kind of stuff for your hangar, for your ship, for your org residency, for your bases that you're building, for your space stations that you're making. It's a lot of stuff that we can customize in this game. I think there's a lot of opportunities there that could get abused. Um, and then maybe like Habs, residencies and stuff. Stuff that's not really going to affect other people as much. Leaking roof? Yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. What happened to the house anyway? Sounds crazy. The house, the city that we're living in is on the Black Sea. Anybody who's from Eastern Europe probably knows that the Black Sea doesn't get hurricanes. Um, but this city got hit by a hurricane force storm back in November. And unfortunately, it was kind of just left, like, there was an initial cleanup, but for the most part... Um, we were in America, we were not going to come back here, uh, the damage wasn't too bad initially, so, you know, it was good, because we wanted to stay, my mom in December, for those who didn't know, was diagnosed with cancer, her, um, she's having treatments, they're ongoing, she's doing well, things are good, but we wanted to stay for that, and make sure that she was okay there, so we stayed until late February before coming back. When we got back here, turns out that the damage was way worse than we thought 
Um, the house is basically unlivable. This is the only room really that we use besides the bedroom because everything else is kind of has mold and stuff. Uh, and it's just, it, it, this house is not good. Like we knew when we moved in, this house is not good, but there is water going through the floors. Like there are cracks in the foundation. It's just, we we're getting out of here as soon as possible. And this storm just made it very clear that we needed to speed that up. So that's the short of what happened. We'll have a video out about that this week. Talk more about the whole story and how the community came together to help us keep going. God bless you all. Thank you so much for helping us with that. Um, but yeah, so that was a time. Do I think the housing and player made Habs that they teased will be released by 4.0? Uh, no, I don't think that player made things will be released by then. Like base building kind of stuff. All right, I have fallen behind again. <laughs> I'm, I'm only just now where Mrs. Tomato attacked me in chat, so we're catching up. I know they said they were trying to complete all RSI ships this year. Do you know if they included gold pass on ships like the Connie? I don't think they're going to complete all RSI ships. I don't think they're going to complete most RSI ships. I think they're going for just a few. The Zeus, the Polaris. I don't even think they'll hit the Galaxy by then. That'd be cool, but... I think that'd be a lot. No economy. Yeah, no economy does suck. Yeah. Oh yeah, the star map won't be bug free. Nothing's gonna be bug free. And so we can talk to zero. Amen. Ah, oh, God! Somebody asked for sing mode. Now we're going to sing the next few minutes of time. Mot4, thank you for the super chat. Said there was a bar citizen, and I participated in the last week. Boop. Do -do 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 -do. I'm making a song because somebody activated sing mode on Twitch. I'm sorry, guys. It's not my choice. Blame Mrs. Tomato. Dev hinted that we will have something else for server meshing. Bah! Besides rep Leia. Do you believe that's possible? <laughs> it's like a little bit of jazz. <laughs> uh, I gotta read that again because I wasn't paying attention. Mm. Something else from server measurement besides replication. I already believe that is possible. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Even tactical views also should zoom models. You can scan or target. Option for all ship models. Zoom for visuals should be able to be toggled. That's a terrible song. Apollo. Yes, I can. The Apollo. Da 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 da. Is the RSI medical ship. It's got two little seats, count them, one, two, and a cockpit, ba da ba, -ba. <laughs> It's also got plenty of beds for the people that broke all their f***ing bones. You can actually replace the beds. You can do three tier threes, two tier twos, or one tier one on either side to kind of Bump up your medical skills. Sorry, bump up your medical skills. I really like this ship. As like an exploration ship. I mean, it's not an exploration ship. It's a, uh, it's a medical ship. But I wish you could make this an exploration ship because it's freaking beautiful. And I love the size of it. I think it's like 30 meters long. 30 to 40 meters. <laughs> <laughs> you make me feel so... Yeah, just to, I just need to get some Frank Sinatra tunes on here so I could just sing about Star Citizen to them. RSI Polo, Ralph Lauren. RSI Aplo, I can't spell. Forty-three meters long. Oh, it's longer than I thought. Thirty meters wide. Yeah, this is a cool ship. Um, this is kind of 
what you should depend on when thinking about whether or not the medical gameplay is going to expand. It's going to expand. It's probably going to expand with this ship. Maybe with this ship. Um, thank you, Mott, by the way, for the super chat. I don't remember if I said that or not. I appreciate you. Why did the letter from the chairman say beta? Um, they want to approach a beta state for the game. At some point. In the next so-and-so time. Arcane and Billy. Thank you both for the bits on Twitch. Appreciate you. It's quite the bitch. <laughs> See, I can rhyme. That's kind of singing, right? Basically singing. This is sing mode. Signing off. Because apparently, so did 40 viewers. <laughs> Not necessarily a singing stream. Um, Saw someone having 50 server FPS the other day. 50? I've seen 30. 50 is crazy. Am I happy about the C1 getting a bigger hanger? Some people are mad. Why are people mad? I'm happy about it, yes. What kind of mission would you do for a rescue vessel? Pisces or a red? Um, I mean, like the ones that we already do, where they send you to caves to find people who are killed. Instead, they just send you to find injured people. Get them onto your ship. Get them healed up. Oof, no, no, not a subsystem. That'd be awful. Are that kind of income enough to sustain server costs? I don't know. Nobody knows how much money they need or are going to need or how they can do it. That's probably a challenge that their people are working towards every year to try and figure out in the long run. Um, maybe they'll license their engine. Maybe they'll use their technology. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, but that is, yeah, that's, that's their problem to handle. That ain't mine. I just play the game. <laughs> Are we sure the updated star map is coming in 323? We're not sure. It's still tentative. I do hope so, though. You thought CIG said the new Moby Glass is no longer coming? Where did you see that? People keep saying these things. Jake, are you still in chat? Did y'all remove the Moby Glass from the road map? No, the Moby Glass rework is still on here. It's tentative. And the FPS map system is on here. And the star map rework is still on here. They're all tentative for 323. They're not removing features. I know people are saying that a lot of features are being removed from the patch. I don't, they're not. I think the only thing that we've lost so far technically um, are the unique item respawn things. Because it turns out we can spawn vehicles in hangars just through the ASOP rather than the hangar terminal, uh, the freight elevator. So I don't, no, I don't, they haven't talked about removing anything else too much from what I know. Well, SR, I'm thinking they could choose the publisher route, right? So they acquired Turbulent, um, they could acquire more studios and just literally be a publisher that says, we're not going to license our tech out to other companies, but we are going to publish any company that is going to use our tech to make a game. So they're, they still have full control over it. Like they can still kind of control where it's being used and how, but uh, they're also making passive income from the fact that those games are also building other things. And that's always a possibility. Turbulence is definitely focused on their making their star systems. But another company could do stuff like that. Just they could have options. To to think that the only option they have is to sell ships is ignoring a lot of the potential of an MMO and the potential of a company that has literally created everything they're using. How are two doing airway wise? How are two oh um, Mrs. Tomato is doing better. It started out kind of rough. She has a mold allergy, which has not treated her well. We've been purifying and dehumidifying the hair like heck. 
uh, sealing off rooms that are problems. I'm, I'm doing okay. Obviously, it's not good to breathe in mold. We are very well aware of that and trying to minimize how much that happens, but... No! Okay. Uh, not much you can do. There is PvP in this game, just Mitch, yes. At which point in development do you think CIG will stop the mega transactions slash $48,000 ship packages? Um, never. Maybe they maybe they will when it reaches 1.0. But like the $48,000 ship package is literally a buy everything in the store package, right? So, you know, if people still want them to sell all of the cosmetics they're selling as one package, I don't know how much that would cost, but it could cost a lot. And like, I, I don't I don't see why they wouldn't do that other than the optics. But I think they've proven that they don't really care too much about the optics. Think your character and ship cargo can be transported between systems while you're offline? I certainly hope so. I really do. That'd have to be something with the per permission system there. Did CIG talk about contract manager rework? Do you think it has to be overworked, reworked? Yes, it does. Um, we've seen it too. To some extent. We've seen the Squadron 42 version. But I don't think they're going to bring it in just yet. Don't you think the main appeal of SC ships versus Eve is basically method of control? Feel like Eve's point and click and auto move to point to spot will never satisfy pilots of SC or Elite Dangerous. Yeah, the the way that you experience the game is a big deal of Star Citizen. Part of the hardest part, rendering the camera in those eyeballs, right? Um. Okay. Mission manager. Here we go. So here's a look at the Squadron 42 contract manager. Star Citizens itself will be a bit different, but you can kind of get an idea of how they're more clearly breaking things out, modularizing it a bit more, adding your objectives and all that jazz. It looks better. Get rid of the freaking double display though, though. I can't, like, I, I, I don't like it. It adds depth to the menu, but I feel like there are better ways to add depth. Than, than double vision. Sorry if it was already asked, do you know if recovering purchased cosmetic armor is coming in with the cargo elevators? It's not. No, that actually got delayed out. That's the one thing that we are seeing get delayed out of 323. And uh, I hope it comes in a 323.x update. We don't know just yet. How would you describe the new player experience nowadays? Still yet to get my feet wet in SC. I still think it's pretty bad. The tutorials help, and it's getting better, uh, but the new player experience isn't going to be any significantly better until after 3.23. New maps, uh, the player interaction experience, I think, is a really big part of including that the map systems for FPS and mini maps. These are the types of things that will make the new player experience much better outside of the tutorial. And hopefully the tutorial is getting updated with them. In that case, if the game is running pretty smoothly with 3.23, I think the new player experience could actually be fairly good. But I still don't think that missions are ready for new players. There's not enough obvious gameplay yet. Plenty of sandbox stuff. Not enough objective-based stuff. We got no news on the Galaxy. You think no Galaxy for this year? I don't think so. I think the Galaxy will come after the Polaris. And, like, they, I mean, the Polaris isn't done yet. Maybe they can get the Galaxy done in six months. But I don't know. Well, proximity chat got worse. His voice quality got better. Like the support for it or the quality? Or like the... Yeah, like how games support it? Ooh, drones. Good call. That's right. The Apollo needs drones. Is Mrs. Tomato a gamer? She is. Yes. She plays some Star Citizen with me, but she likes the more violent games. GTA 5, Mortal Kombat, uh, Destroy All Humans. <laughs> no, I don't think she knows that game, but she is a gamer indeed. It's actually one of the biggest things that helped us when we were 
in a long distance relationship. We did, um, we were in a relationship between America and Turkey for how long was that? That was a while, like a year, over a year. Um, a lot of that time we spent playing Civ 6 together. We, we did a lot of bonding over Sim, Civ 6, and I think we put down like 400 hours maybe. That was, that was something. But that's part of our passion. That's why she does Space Tomato Gaming with me. That's why we basically run a game-based YouTube, Twitch, podcast, Discord-focused um, um, channel together. Because we both love gaming, we both love community, we both love being creative, and it, it works for us. That is false. What is false, Gumbo? Don't believe what you read on social media. Wait, what is false? Why would a subsystem be bad? I just think it ties a lot of people out of the game. For a lot of people, it's hard to keep up a regular payment for a game like that. And the more games you have that have a regular payment like that, the less you can do them. Persistent hangers coming very soon. How long do you think until persistent habs? I'm thinking next year, 2025. And I'm hoping for that at least. Think they still plan on having planets orbit the stars and moons? Orbit the planets? I, I hope so. It's going to be really difficult to do that with the economy. But I think having orbits in this game could make really, really cool scenarios for exploration, for commerce, for um, base building. Like imagine the kind of gold rush you would get when two planets are really close to each other. One with a ton of mining and the other with a ton of places to sell. Like normally they're across a system so you have to take these jumps around and there's a lot of places that you can get caught and trapped and it's not as good a route. But imagine like those orbits kind of line up for one time. One time every like three years in game. And you just have like a two minute jump between the two planets and you are, you're gold, you're golden. I would love that. Um, I also, I know I talk about it a lot. I would love the same thing with a comet. A comet flies into the system once every couple of months. Not only can people go and visit it because they've never seen it before, but the people with the best ships, with the best exploration focused ships, with the most time to put towards exploration, can fly out and meet that comet when it first gets into the system. Get all the most valuable resources, flex their exploration muscle. Then as it gets closer to the system, more and more players are getting into it, uh, going to look at it, visiting it, getting some of the resources. And then by the time it's in the center of the system, it's all the new players seeing it. And it's like they still get to take part in it because it's really close to where they are, but it's also kind of like end game gameplay because it's moving and it's focused on exploration and it's deep space and all that. I think the idea of orbits in this game could be really cool. What do I mean by double vision in the Moby Glass? Like if you look at the menu down here, you see how there's a faint display of the icons. Unlike, uh, it adds like a little bit of a shadow almost. That's what I mean. How do you assess the growth of creator streamers or YouTubers? Are we more at the beginning or end of Star Citizen? Not from a development standpoint, but from content creator space? Is the market saturated? No, absolutely not. This game's going to get pretty big. Like a lot of people are waiting for this game. You can go and just look at um, a ton of different creators who are huge, like Jack Frags. He's definitely going to jump hard into this game. Look at how many videos he's already made about it. He really enjoys it. It's just not quite ready for him. Same with somebody like JV. Um, he also expressed a lot of interest in Star Citizen. Asmongold looked like he was very excited about it. Like you can just look up major YouTubers. Um, and these are just the ones who have said that they're interested in it, right? Once, once this game starts to make more noise and it's actually presentable and it looks like a fun game to play i think a lot of people will be jumping into it and there's going to be a ton of space for different people to make different types of niche content maybe not videos maybe blogs websites services different kind of stuff
<laughs> Do I think the Gattack Raylan will be introduced in Alien Week? No, unfortunately not. Um, they haven't really talked about it yet. I don't know if they're actually working on it or not. They said they were going to, but like, where is it? It wasn't even on that teaser video from CitizenCon. If content creators wouldn't have made such a rave about it, you wouldn't have noticed the doubling at all. I don't notice it too often. I only notice it when I'm reading the text, I think. And generally, it's when my gamma is higher because the contrast is a little bit more intense. Do I think the Reclaimer will get its drones or be walked back? Uh, I think it'll get its drones. Do you believe CIG will be able to create good enough tutorials for Squadron 42 and make the game really intuitive for a new player? Yeah, I do. I think they all have some very good tutorials in Squadron. Okay, I'm definitely seeing repeated messages on here. <laughs> you were checking the roadmap today just realized only two of the 24 targeted features to release on 323 are actually going to make it to the update don't know how it'll end that's not what that means um tentative does not mean it's not going to make it it just means it's not confirmed yet and generally a lot of features aren't confirmed until it's like well into evocati and hitting the ptu i don't think our next roadmap roundup will be until next week so the first week of april is when you'll probably start to see things more confirmed but anything that's still on here is still possibly in the patch um the only things that won't be in are the things that are removed like the specific item retrieval they talked about do i think we'll get drones before 4.0 i haven't seen any signs of it What hour does this week in Star Citizen arrive? Pretty late over here. It's like 7 o'clock UTC, 6 o'clock UTC. I think we'll see the optional subscription continue and it'll include a small UEC stipend. Maybe still some flair. I like that idea that you can just continue your optional, optional sub. And if that continues to fund uh, content, that would be cool too, but... Servers are more valuable. In terms of the developer progression to successful launch, there is one more game that seems to be beating out SC Ashes of Creation. Good thing it does not completely, does not, does not really co compete much, or does it? Um, I don't think so. That's like a fantasy-based historical game, right? Am I thinking of the right one? player flung asteroids yes perhaps the uh, double vision can be an option to turn on and off that'd be cool i like that options are nice you're gonna go back to work till it's out till this week in star oh 323 yeah no 323 is not gonna be out for at least a month right lyric has also talked about it well, I mean, Ollie's not a mystery. <laughs> He's, he is consistent in Star Citizen. Yeah, not to say you have to like any of these YouTubers, but they're definitely showing interest. But yeah, there are not many people. Like, if you go to Halo com uh, content online, you, uh, actually, we could do something more relevant. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Halo. Jesus. It's gonna say we could do something more relevant and that just that hurt oh my god ah oh, sad days halo um let's see um what was i even looking for again Oh, games. Uh, let's do um, Ark. No, what was that game? Not League of Legends. What the heck is the game? The Battle Royale game with the... That wasn't Titanfall. It's like Titanfall, but not. Apex. That's it. Apex Legends. Jesus. So, like, if you go here, you could probably scroll through and just see a ton of different people. A ton of different channels doing 
content for it. And a lot of it is gameplay based. So I get that there are a lot of gameplay based Star Citizen creators, but like you could just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and there's tons of different names in a thing like this. But if you go and look at Star Citizen and I'm going to skew my results if I try to search on my own profile. So if you look for Star Citizen and you look at how many names pop up, um, it a lot of repeats and a lot of videos that just don't even have anything to do with Star. What? People also watched Russian Tactical Success. Because that makes sense, YouTube. Yeah, that that fits. <laughs> um, if you scroll through, man, it's hard to find just a row of videos, huh? YouTube is just cluttered. But yeah, you see a lot of the same people. You see these the, the main channel. Um, and just in general, I think there's a lot of space for people to cover this game. But there's also not much going on in the game yet to, to cover it. Like... Most of the people who are doing a lot of stuff in Star Citizen have been doing it for a while, so they have a very established community, and they can ship the videos out. But for a lot of people getting started in it right now, there's just plenty of things to cover, not a lot of people watching it. Soon, TM. Any ideas when Wave 2 can expect to test 323? I have no idea. thing about Ashes of Creation is that it has built the foundational features. That's good. I've heard good things about the game. I don't know much about it. Um, but it's good to hear that they're having a success. Which of the remaining features do you predict are likely not to make 1.0. Hmm. Something like space station construction. <laughs> I do think that there's a, a... All of the things I think of, I can see possibly making 1.0. Think of things like farming, having pets, um... Uh... Other things, gosh, like what? I don't know. I don't see any feature that's like ridiculously far out that couldn't be done. The biggest thing that I've been worried about this whole time is server meshing. After that is player controlled shops. But I feel like they would they would hard push player controlled shops to make sure they're in 1.1.0. Cause like the Kraken, the um the Kraken Pioneer and the Banu Merchantman are both based around the idea that you're going to be able to have other players in AI dock with you, come on board and barter for a thing. That sounds... Maybe it's normal, maybe it's simple, but that sounds pretty intense. And I do wonder how long that'll take. Halo just had a huge tournament. They're doing better, but it's not, not quite what it used to be. This update does feel like it's going to be big, Atropian. like how you're literally play chat master here, chatting in both YouTube and Twitch. It's good fun, huh? <laughs> Parallel universes. How do you think Maelstrom is going to work for villages? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my ultimate hope would be that the AI come and repair the villages, but I, have, I just don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I own, <laughs> you own notice the MCN bookmark. Looking through my books, huh? Um, this is an interesting one from a YouTube channel I started back in 2020. Uh, yeah, I own a motorcycle. Actually just now selling it. Um, it's a 2014 Ducati Street Fighter. It is... I'm going to miss it. I'll show you a picture. Because, you know, you ask somebody about their motorcycle, they have to show you pictures of it. If you don't show pictures of your car, are you really a car driver? Here it is. This is one of the last pictures I took of it. Um, selling it while we're over here. And um, yeah, we've had it for probably like seven years now. 
didn't really ride it too much. That was the thing is like I spent so much time in Turkey. I only put like 4,000 something miles on it. So it's practically good as new. It's got a lot of aftermarket parts on it. And I freaking love it. I'm going to miss it so much. But uh, I am I am at the end of my motorcycle phase for now. Uh, the next motorcycle era starts when my kids move out. <laughs> It will also probably be exclusively on the track because people suck at driving. I I am blessed that I never got hit by a car driver, but boy, oh boy, did I get close a few times. These people do not know how to drive on the road. First heard about Star Citizen from watching Hawks Gaming. Used to watch him for info on Elite Dangerous. Yeah, he was, I was just talking to him a little while ago. Uh, does a really good job with YouTube in general impressive to see how he handles his channel and stuff the videos are good too did i play x4 i did we played it on stream a little bit not as much as i'd like to but got to play it is now a good time to join the game starter ship sales also how do you get a ship with lti any starter pack you get will have a ship with lifetime insurance um on top of that i wouldn't worry too much about it you'll You'll have your LTI, no doubt. Um, and also, I don't think lifetime insurance is going to be as valuable as it's been made out to be. But I would say if you really wanted to get into the game, maybe wait another couple of months. Because then the game is going to be a lot better place for newcomers. But now, in general, this year is, a, I think, a pretty good, I, pretty good time to get in if you're really interested in it. There's a Korean MMO that came out in 2002 that had player controlled shops. Oh yeah, I mean a lot of MMOs have done the player control shops, but there are a lot of systems in this game that I don't know how they would work with something like that. Like they want people to dock with a ship and like the NPC to transfer from one ship onto another through the airlock and then come and talk to you and like what happens if that NPC's ship gets disconnected what happens if that NPC gets killed? Is their ship then a criminal thing? Like, there's so many little complicated things that have to do with specifically owning a public shop in space. Why selling? I'm I'm just I'm done riding. I don't use it very much. I'm in Turkey for a lot of the year. Um, and like, if it's just sitting there, then it's like an eight thousand dollar bike that's. It, the fuel goes bad every single year. I have to replace the battery, pump the tires, and redo the fuel every time I go back. And then I ride it once, and then I come back to Turkey. It's not, it's not worth all that. Monster 400, nice. No, that was not a hint of babies. <laughs> Stop it. I will be very definitive about that when it happens, okay? <laughs> The engine is terrible. This game will never run good. What? I was just playing in it running good. I just hopped into the game yesterday. I had 30 frames per second on the server, 60 frames per second on my computer. Ooh, ooh, it was buttery. What you talking about? What phase, Citizen Scott? It was my initial, my first, it was the prologue. Do we think the 1.0 plan is going to include full gold standard reworks for all flyable ships? Ooh. Um. I don't know. Maybe for all flyable ships. Oh my god, that's a lot, dude. Like if 1.0 was say three to four years out, that's a lot of ships in three to four years. On top of the ones they're already building. Rode a motorcycle around Antioch. <laughs> Crazier than I thought. These drivers can not can negotiate a left turn. Dude, the crazier part, I drove the motorcycle around Orlando, Florida. That place has like the highest death per mile stretch of highway in the country. The people are, oh my god. It's a mixture of people who hate driving, don't know how to drive, and out-of-towners renting cars for Disneyland and Universal. Disney World. Misery. How likely will the dark forest mentality continue as we wait for the new star systems and reputation to come online. I think VOIP is going to help a lot with interaction and like 
getting people to actually start working with each other. Um, yeah, I think that... I think that there's a lot of people who want to play with players but don't really feel... I'm assuming you mean this in, term, in the sense of players. I think there are a lot of people who want to play the game with other people, but not necessarily with other people, right? They just want to use other people, like maybe just a couple lines. Hey, just bring in some stuff over. Can you take this for me? Hey, just want to sell some boxes or, um, hey, can somebody come out and buy this mining materials off of me so I can keep mining and not go back to the space station? Like those kinds of things would be a lot more viable if the voice over IP system worked well and also the ship and person identifying systems worked well which is what we're seeing here with things like um the new scanning system where is that can't even find it well things like the pfizer and lens rework it's going to help with understanding who you're looking at things like the uh, fps scanning and radar which i'm not seeing on here did that get removed some locations or is it included in the visor and lens? Might be included there. But yeah, there are there are systems I think are helping with that. Wait, are you guys talking about a, a different a different uh, game engine? As we wait for oh, I already read that. Oh, are we almost caught up? Almost caught up with chat, and then I'm going to fall right back behind. Here we go. Those features are what I meant when I talked about difficulties of server meshing tech. Yeah, there are going to be some complications for them to figure out. You hear that 8,000 toys sitting around thing, but you can't even imagine giving up riding, live in the Rockies and ride all year. I love riding, man, but don't even have much time to do it. When base building becomes a thing, you see space communities being a thing. You mean like the Garden Interstellar? Hey, join GII hashtag. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are a lovely community. If you couldn't tell from our let's spam. You love Unreal Engine as well, but people need to stop jerking to it. Don't compare this engine to it. Oh, are people comparing it to comparing Unreal Engine to this? Have you played FPS combat much? That's not butter at all. Desync is a massive issue that isn't resolved with 30 FPS servers. Well, I think it was running well. And the fact that we went from 5 FPS servers to 30 FPS servers, in my mind, doesn't tell me that it will never run well. It just means that it's not running well right now. I think 30 FPS is good. But um, for the hardcore FPS experience, yeah, maybe they need to speed it up. But the idea that this game will never run well because of the engine is, um, I don't know, I, that seems like a weird statement to me given the, experience, the uh, improvements they've made. The new plan for SC 1.0 is not the same plan that was originally pitched. It will not have all 100 systems. Yeah, well, not at all. However, it will have enough systems and ships to be engaging and all and gameplay loops will be in the 1.0 release. E. VOIP is not a selling point for you having to listen to random players sitting in the wind or telling me how much I suck is not an enticing feature. It's not for everyone. Can't wait to set up your little hut on the edge of GII civilization and drive into town on your PTV to get groceries. <laughs> we'll deliver groceries to you. Don't worry about it. Think we'll get another Q2 patch later in Q2? Maybe at the end of summer. Maybe. Any engine can be morphed into anything. Is that, is that coming from experience or just kind of like, are you game dev or game dev professional industry professional? I don't know. Shadow Spectre. Thank you for the membership on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome to the crew. Nice. I'm all these, I'm always amazed by how many game devs are following this game, but I guess it makes sense since it's so open in development. Is there a game engine of choice for you?
What game loops are expected but not currently in the game? Oh god. <laughs> Refining, refueling, passenger transport. I know these things are in game, guys, but I'm just going to I'm going to say how it is. Passenger transport, refining, refueling, um I guess the medical thing is okay. Uh, proper exploration um, support, engineering gameplay, uh, base building, crafting. Ship, ship hauling, really, like transporting ships. I, I'm including ship repair in my in engineering. I guess you could break out repair too. Mining. Mining's in the game. Um, science, as they call kind of like research. Like, there's a game that's supposed to have a telescope on it to do research. Not sure how that's going to work. Halo 4v4 tick rate 60 hertz. Big team battle tick rate 30 hertz. I mean, if somebody's saying that they're getting 50 hertz in Star Citizen already, then... I guess that's good. I didn't see that. Did you watch the short presentation of Unreal 5.4? They showed technology that makes animation smooth and transitions between animations and poses smooth. Hope something like this will appear in Star Citizen. That would be cool. Animation interpolation kind of thing. Data running. Data running is also, yeah. These are not the game the, the game loops that must be in the game prior to 1.0. I don't know what's supposed to be in the game prior to 1.0. That's like, that's what they're working on supposedly. But those are the things that I think I can remember off the top of my head. And from chat that are supposed to be in the game that aren't really yet. Speaking of money and R&D, CIG has so much of this it approaches absurdity, so if they do not succeed, no one can. I wouldn't say it approaches absurdity. Have you seen how much money game companies make? Like, there are some game companies that are making more than CIG has made in the last 10 years in like one year. And I'm not saying that like means anything in particular. Other than I just, I don't, I, the amount of money that they have or that they've invested, um, I think is still relatively small for the industry. Not to say, God, it's going to be taken so out of context. Not to say that like they shouldn't have a good game with the amount of money they made. But when I look at companies and how much money they make, a lot of that money goes to investors and stuff. I get that. But um, that's also including the money that they use to invest in the engine beforehand and, and all that stuff. Uh, they have a lot of other things to deal with, so again, I'm not like comparing them or anything. But I don't think that the money they have necessarily means that they should do better than other people, because other people do have a lot of money. Time? That's a different story. I agree with you there. You, you can't, other companies definitely can't just work on stuff and keep working on stuff until they feel like it's ready. They have to meet a deadline, and CIG's been... Very, very fortunate in that sense. Ship hauling is in, isn't... Ship hauling is in, but so is refueling. Like, it's in in that it's supported. It's not really a game loop yet, in my opinion. FPS needs 60 hertz server tick rate at least, and that is already outdated frequency. Modern shooters use 120 hertz, and that is when weird stuff is less likely. I don't know, man. That's really fast. Are there other MMOs with shooting that, like, set a sort of bar for performance? But their games exist again that's not the argument i'm making i knew see that's why i said it i'm not making a comparison i'm not saying that those companies should be doing better i'm just saying that there is a lot of money that you can pull in 
but from gaming. And I don't think that the money that CIG has made is necessarily indicative of an astronomical amount in the gaming industry. Modern Warfare 2 did 800 million in its first three days. That's pretty nice. How many copies is that? Understand both sides over a decade, half a billion in investment is insane if you take an outside look. The time's certainly a lot. The money is also a lot. The time is what, what I think gets me more. Because there's definitely a couple of years there where things were pretty slow. Like those first four years were... Uh... <laughs> How do you feel about the fact they've made Pyro smaller? I know it's still much larger compared to Stanton, but I was hoping refueling and re refueling and fuel awareness would be more important than it looks like it'll be right now. I think they've probably balanced it so that it's still important, but not so much that it makes the game less, like, super less fun. I'm not too worried about it getting smaller because there will be a lot of other systems and they can balance the way that fuel works, the way that quantum travel um consumes fuel the balance on ships got to see kind of what they plan on doing with the other aspects too other games that took about 10 years or, or more yeah there are but i don't know many like i still think 10 years is a long time even though other games have too most current fps games use 60 hertz Yeah, how much would a game like PUBG use? Um, what would be their tick rate for the server? Feels like 120 hertz is like really <laughs> crazy high. You think 30 hertz is fine? That doesn't solve networking issues that cause lag spikes and desync for FPS combat. Still more optimization to be done, eh? Can we please get back to the good stuff and stop hating on the game? Nobody is keeping the haters in the room by force. We're talking about good stuff. Does anyone else think it's a bad idea to put the reputation and hostility in now? With so many broken missions, it's already an issue with low rep from failures. How's this going to lock people out of testing game loops? What if I'm testing illegal hacking missions one week and then they put in something like Overdrive Initiative? Am I locked out of participating because of my bad guy rep? Um, yeah, but that's part of the game. They have to start putting the hostility in because we need to start getting protection. Like everybody is freaking out about how PvP works and how criminals can get around and how do we protect the game and armistice zones and all that. And they can't do any of that until reputation protects us. And they can't, we can't get protected until NPCs know who to attack and who not to. Did CIG talk? What will happen to our hangars that we've bought, like Revel and York? I think those will be coming into the game once they get those archetypal locations into the game to support them. But for now, uh, just going to get placeholders, I believe. Falling behind again. Jumping forward. Oh, does our, does the throne chat command not even work? Or is stream elements not working? That should have thrown you a link. How long have we been up here? Oh, we're almost at three hours, my friends. For testing negative rep, you can always use alts. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can use some alts. Um, I guess also that would probably be part of the testing, right? CIG needs to test how long it takes for us to repair our rep so we can do these missions 
and see whether or not they need to make that more or less difficult. Problem with that is though is overdrive initiative is tied to a ship upgrade. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you could do a character repair. Maybe that would get rid of the rep. I'm not sure. What's my favorite card on the release view for 323? The map rework. Star map. You'd absolutely hate for your customers, your software to have as much development expertise as the SC community does. But that's probably how it all, every company with talking to the public is, right? Like, oh my God, imagine being somebody who works on movies, constantly hearing how you don't have the right idea for the movie, or you don't know how the movie was going to work, or you don't know how to actually write the movie, how it's meant to be, and like, ugh. Public facing work is a double-edged sword, and CIG's definitely had to <laughs> deal with that on both sides quite a bit. If they put in events that they offer people things like ship upgrades and then lock people out of those loops, there will be hell. I'm betting that they won't. Like, once, once the ability to be locked out of an event is in, they will probably have either an alternate way to get whatever upgrade that is. Um, or they just won't even have upgrades linked to events like that anymore. Yeah, it's true, Agent. Part of what they want to get under control in industry time versus quality versus investment return. How do you see the pyro gameplay? Will it work like Stanton missions, planets, outposts? I think pyro is just going to be like Stanton for pirates or for outlaws. So you'll have your factions that you might be aligned with. You'll have people that you can work with. You'll have enemies that are hunted regularly, but will still be coming after you. Those are the bounty hunters. And you'll be able to go over to Stanton for a more dangerous and intense time of gameplay. There's going to be plenty of missions. You're going to have six planets, uh, five moons, I think, or seven moons, something like that. You got tons of outposts, villages, towns, NPCs, factions. It's a whole bunch of stuff in... Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff in Pyro. Yeah. Reputation should be the main grind. Resetting it is not a good call. Um, yeah, I think instead of resetting it, really, CIG should just make sure not to have anything linked to a ship upgrade like that. But the idea of not being able to get into an event because of your reputation... Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, if you fight for Xenothreat and then you go and get into the Xenothreat event, you should expect the civilian defense force to shoot you. If you uh, only fight for the UEE and you go into um, Blockade Runner, you should expect the Ninetales folks to shoot at you. Like, they won't let you fight with them because that's, that's how you align. Which is why a lot of people are probably going to have alt accounts. Hope that there's repercussions for those living in Pyro when they enter, enter Stanton. Much like what happens when you have a negative rep and even jump to high sec. Well, some people are not, not outlaws living in Pyro. There are normal people there too. So maybe not necessarily just for coming from Pyro, but uh, maybe for associating with the factions there. Gumbo, you, you would say Magnus is a lawless frontier? I think it's a pretty... Pretty, not safe, but like a pretty civilized place. Yeah, they're dealing with a lot of problems. Worse than Stanton, but like, they've got corporations there and stuff. No, they're working pretty, pretty hard on mission givers right now. In fact, that showed up on a monthly report pretty recently. Say I'm putting it in the game when half the missions don't work is a mistake. I no, I get what you're, I get you're not saying it's a bad thing, but I think like there needs to be reputation in the game. 
They can't just keep holding things off because missions don't work. The missions team will work on their missions, but like to tell the team who's working on reputation, which I guess is also the missions team, um, to not work on reputation because of that is just holding the game back. Like we need hostility from NPCs. We need to be able to fight against AI based on what we've done. Missions currently have a daunting task. PvE content that is scripted to happen under players meeting the right conditions for the mission is accomplished with scripting. Scripting these events for MMOs tanks servers, especially one as big as SC. Do you think they should relegate the workload of these events to the local client only with server sync happening as an after effect or should it be scripted live in real time? Oh boy. That's probably uh, more of a question for someone who knows networking stuff i think it should happen on the server because client clients running things that can clients running thing that other clients depend on seems to be um a recipe for for problems and that daunting task might be something that can help with like from server meshing but then you're also you're still getting into that sort of same soft problem of where do you stop the servers because it gets expensive. Still build negative rep towards Stanton when misbehaving in Pyro. It just does not affect you unless you come to Stanton. Yeah, if you're misbehaving in Pyro. But like if you're running just good missions, you're just delivering stuff to Pyro. Maybe even you're just passing through as a cargo hauler from another system. You shouldn't get negative rep for that. Been a while since you logged in. Even though 323 hasn't dropped, you're about to pull the sticks out. What you got? What are you running? Aren't missions already ran external to the game server? Not sure of that. I actually don't know. Hello, Martin. How you doing? Whew. Okay. Caught up with chat. This was a lot. <laughs> this is a busy one. Thanks everybody for I'm not I'm not saying I'm gone yet. Don't worry. Um, but thank you all for being so active today. Chat has been popping off. We've been having a good time. It's been we've been going just nonstop for like two hours. Server meshing task will, regardless of their method, is something that will also be massive workload for each server. That's kind of why you asked. I see. Yeah, I have no idea on that one. Magnus is pretty low sec. UE controlled but not heavily patrolled like Stanton and Terra. Yeah, definitely not. Not like those, but better than Nix and Pyro, I hope. Having time to spend an SC at last. Had busy times at work. Good to see you again, Martin. Much love to you, Jaybird. All right. Since things have slowed down, and we are actually approaching a, an, an end time. I am going to go ahead and wrap things up here. This is a good q and A. I I think we got through a ton of info. I didn't actually spend as much time on any one topic as I was planning on. But like we got through a lot. We got to talk about a lot. Hopefully you got some good information from this. Maybe learned something new. Maybe uh, learned to love or hate Star Citizen more. Or, or me. You know, maybe you hate my explanations. And uh, you're going to write off this YouTube channel forever. If that's the case, thanks for coming at least this time. I appreciate you. It's good fun. If that's not the case, though, uh, love to see you all next time. We'll be live again on Wednesday. I will probably be bringing a guest on to do some gameplay. Not entirely sure what I'll be doing yet, but I'm looking to get back into the game because now I can actually run it, and it's it's pretty cool. Zeus, is that a question? We did talk about the Zeus, if that's what you're asking.
Is Dual Universe the only other game that uses server meshing that's kind of like what SC is doing? There's a few games that do it, I believe. Um, Dual Universe is definitely one of them, though. Hey, thank you, Freddy. Appreciate you. Vass and you shill. <laughs> Appreciate you, buddy. Have a great day, and thanks for the content. Thank you, Atropian. Firebrand, appreciate you. Game Crouton. Good to see you. Holston Coop, Vassin, Fate, Aki. All right, I'm going to send you over to... Let's see. Hey, no problem if you came in late. It's all good. We talked about the Zeus a bit towards the beginning of the stream if you want to... Rewind and go back to that one. Keep chilling, my friends. <laughs> Where are we raiding? All right, I'm going to send you all over to Fexy. It's been a little, little while since you raided over there. Um, oh, wait, Segelian's on? See, this is the problem with with uh, Twitch. It doesn't even tell me. Not only do I follow these people, but they're if they're online, it's weird to me that it doesn't tell me that. But yeah, I don't know. I don't see these people. So we're going to go with uh, Fexy. Looks like they're doing some looky-looky at the different ships um, and getting into some discussion. Going straight from discussion to discussion. You know how it is. If you want to see some gameplay, I'm sure there's plenty of that as well. But I'm going to send you all over there. Thank you again so much for joining me, folks. It's good times. Um, if you're watching this as a video and you want to come check these out live, I'm live Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We usually do these on Mondays. And you'll catch some gameplay on the other days. Uh, it's over on Space Tomato 2. Or wait, that's where they're watching this. The, the stream's on the main channel. Something like that. <laughs> Anyways, everybody. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Go give someone a hug. Eat something yummy. And uh, celebrate yourself. You're good people. I'll catch you all later. Once again, have a good one. And I'll see you all on Wednesday. Bye.